What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic. I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. I know, I thought, I thought you said a century. Okay, yep. It's okay. Welcome here. Thank you so much for tuning in to the NECC eSports stream here. Uh, we are bringing you match number two of the day between Sac State Green and UC Davis 1 in the Champions Division. We are going to be having some fun here. Vincent is my co-caster. My name is Orbital, and we will be your broadcaster. Vincent, how you doing, my man? Oh, I'm feeling good. I am ready to go. We are back up in the uh, champions division, man. This is this is feeling good. And honestly, these two teams, I think it might be a bit spicy up here. Um, we've got UC <laughs> Davis going 2-0 right now. Um, they, they did beat out Boise State, but... So did Sac State. They beat Boise State, but they're one and one on the season um, as they they lost out to Johnson and Wales. Uh, so it, it's honestly a bit of a toss up, all things considered. We're headed to bind first. What are you thinking? Who do you think takes this orbital? Uh, well, keep in mind to to reiterate, we don't want to say they just beat Boise State. There are two Boise States here in true, the true. Champions Division. Uh, it was Boise State two. Uh, they both beat Boise State 2. Boise State 1, I believe, actually defeated Sac State Green. That is how they got their first loss. So uh, looking to bounce back. Uh, of course, UC Davis tied in first place at 2-0 as well. Tied with Florida, Florida Atlantic University and Boise State 1 as well. So uh, I think, honestly, UC Davis should be coming out of this pretty much with fire under their butts. Uh, again, two series wins so far. And uh, we kind of noticed this trend in Champions Division so far. It's been nothing but two O's. So whoever takes the first map, uh, I don't want to say that it's going to happen, mm. but 
so far, it seems that the momentum carried over from game number one tends to affect the second game as well. Maybe we broke the curse here. Maybe the first three-map series here for the Champions Division. Who knows? But we are into the Agent Select on Bind, like I mentioned, our first map. And right now, nobody... I say nobody. Three player, players already locked in, but not a lot of lock-ins. There we go. A couple more of those <laughs> for the UC Choose Davis side. Agent. And they're going with... I mean, this is pretty meta. Um, you know, the Cypher here, you could pull a Killjoy, but Cypher is really strong on Bind anyway. Um, and, of course, Ray's incredibly strong, especially around that hook area, the short A area. Uh, basically anywhere. There, there's a lot of, uh, you know, small corridors. For the same reason, Ray's is good on Split. Ray's is good on Bind. Yeah, and we will have on the defending side Sac State Green coming out here. Uh, hoping they can make it work uh, with, like you said, the Rays. The Sova as well. We've seen very nice plays coming out. I think we've actually uh, seen Psycho as uh, well pop off with that uh, Hunter's Fury a few times as well. So I'm excited to see what we can have if it's going to be this crazy game. Uh, I, I really want to see it because, I mean, already we've seen some fantastic play throughout today. Um, just from the first few series. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, if, if there's uh, maybe maybe I'm being a little bit biased here, Orbital, but the last couple times <laughs> I've seen Bind, I've seen the Sovas pop off. So I kind of am just expecting that we're going to see maybe Psycho pop off or various pop off regardless. Either way, I'm excited to get into it as the buy phase is a ticking down. Not quite as many frenzies as we were used to a couple weeks ago after that patch, but still. Pretty solid stuff all the way around, mostly classics, though all things considered with a plethora of armor. Yep. Just taking a quick peek into that B area through port and window, uh, of course. And I think they're gonna try and tag a few. Darius deciding that he wants to take a slight strength in. That's gonna be a nice little pick off as the sheriff finds C16 right behind. Yeah, very nice start as indeed, as it is just a one player advantage. So, and that one player advantage for the defense, despite that spike plant. So there comes the push, curveballs go out both directions, but Slaughter gets the better of the trades, gets a second indeed. Quiz finally trading out and a second to clean that up. So it just leaves the one player, the paranoia gets thrown in from the omen on the opposing side. Brace looking for everything, playing in the dark cover, needs to pick up the frag onto the player defusing that spike, but it's not gonna be. The Omen on Omen action is going to be favoring Quiz. It picks up a triple kill for the first round. Ooh, Quiz popping off, of course, here. Getting a 3k in the starting rounds, that always bodes fairly well. Um, when you when you can pick up those early kills and, and be able to start buying a little bit quicker, that's going to be the Spectre for him. Uh, actually, four Spectres, I believe. Kaizen yet to still buy. Looks like he might be saving up a little bit more, even when with the half armor. Uh, the light shield's coming out, and there it is. Okay, so five yeah. Spectre buy coming out against a full Econ uh, for the side of UC Davis. I feel like we've had had an evolution here, Orbital, of uh, <laughs> of this second round buy. Like like at first, once that stinger change came in, some people were still doing the full stingers, and then slowly but surely there was less and less stingers, and now it's just the full spectres all the way around at times. So it's kind of funny. Nonetheless, this one player here on the site. Well, I say one. There was two. Rux there. Crossfire is good. Kaizen and Rux double kill a piece. Rux happy about that setup. It was a very nice pink right on the bottom side of the site. And they just get a flawless round. Uh, kind of to be expected, though, of course, against an Econ versus an SMG buy. So very well played. And now third round. Let's go ahead. Uh, uh, take a look. Yep, that's going to be the Vandals coming out. Uh, again, fairly standard in any early round part of the game. Yeah, exactly. You know, those, those first couple rounds, the buys going both ways, and then the bonus round, right? And that was a very, really, very, really, really solid second round, right? Nobody's falling at all. So the economy is quite strong here for Sac State as uh, they are in a pretty strong position to try and pick this bonus round up against that full rifle purchase on the other side. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm interested to see because now UC Davis should have the utility that they need, the resources to start getting those early picks and start showing off why they are 2-0. Uh, off on the side, Smurf Sickles and Rux having some fun grabbing the first frag for their team respectively. And it's up a wash ball at C16. And he used the alarm box. It's going to 
gonna be a shock dart kind of missing his target but again the clearance coming with some of these utility abilities is starting to uh put a little doubt in their minds yeah just sell sell the information brace getting some of that right there cover going through but quiz Ooh. wins the gunfight close range with the smg very solid but on the a little bit of an off angle slaughter so what a finger up the, the late trade there as the run it back is utilized three on three now as slaughter just tries to get aggressive tries to push through the player heaven not spotted out though that's key as he's sent back to his main body so three on three now for the retake I will be honest, that's probably the fastest run it back that I've seen used in a match around three, of course, uh, just right off the bat. And I don't know if that might affect the setup because in about two rounds, you should um, have the rest of the ultimates up for your team. So not having that run it back is a very strong utility that you can use. You know, it's that extra life that that's all you have to use. So using it early, not really getting much out of it does still bode well if the attackers actually come up with the first win. Slaughter just kind of dancing and said, you know what, we got the kills, we may have, uh, you know, had a little bit of fun there, and I'll take my death in pure confidence. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know about that one. I feel like you could have gotten out. <laughs> like, but... Uh, he was dancing like he was happy about it. So I know. I <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I like the style points. I give, him, I give Slaughter credit for the style points, but maybe less credit for the economy game. Nonetheless, there's still plenty of cash for them to buy back in, as well as the other side picking up plenty of rifles, considering they just invested the, uh, they just had the invested bonus weapons that they carried over from the prior round. So first, uh, this is the first real gun round of, of the game um, after the bonus. So I'll be interested to see kind of how the response is for the defense after losing that first, uh, that first bonus round. Um, and we say uh, full searches as a judge comes out for C16. So I really <laughs> like this. Uh, you know, full buy, 1,500 credits. Uh, that's all we're going to drop. Slaughter again, finding these kills, already showing that he is one of the stars of the David squad. And that's going to be a quick drop. The judge finds it. Psycho drops C16. And that's going to be very grabbing uh, a second kill off to the side. So again, you see David for a full clear and braced. Saving his teammate right there yeah very nice job there Smurfs goes nearly caught out right but now it's just Kaizen and Slaughter that's a, I mean that's a nice shot absolutely demolishing putting into the grave that Cypher making sure nothing's gonna happen so it's all tied up two to two now and well it's not looking great for the Sac State side they've got to go back to the eco back to the drawing board but you know what time it is it's bucket time and making those all important highlight real clips you know the uh the leap to shot in the face is probably one of my favorites to watch oh yeah it's always a good time right and uh well looking to try to do that in this position but Unfortunately, not going to happen as there's nobody really giving that opportunity, though. Psycho is able to pick up that Bucky. Um, that's pretty impressive. Now it's just a three on four, though, and there's a lot of range to contend with here on the attacker side. Not the happiest to sit with. Rux and the rest of the squad is stuck in window. Kind of worried about how they're going to attempt this right they don't really have the guns to wait on and that's why they're just kind of pushing up a little bit a couple shots off the but a nice fly slaughter picks up a 4k oh that was such a beautiful blind on that map picks up four and is now once again with that running back 10 to already double digit kills uh my gosh this is this is uc davis yeah that's a great start for slaughter um you know on the phoenix something that you don't necessarily always see um but when you do i think it's always got great potential for the opener great potential uh for apparently the eco rounds as well if you're a slaughter so um, nonetheless it was an eco so that means that we gotta have weapons back out but that run it back you're mentioning orbital it's in slaughter going forward looking for it on the a site meets one in the middle but no guns are out everybody they, they just they had they had a little bit of a uh of a pause they're like okay wait a second we'll just put our guns away and now we go 
that had to feel bad if he watches that kill cam back. I don't think he's gonna be happy. Uh, Connor had a full time to, to have his knife out, realize there was an opponent, swap to the gun, and then fire. Oh, that, that feels rough. That is gonna be the plant over on a site this time around. And again, everyone's still stuck in the defender's spawn into hallways. Ah, that is. This is gonna be a dangerous attempt to take, take. Yeah, and then three on five. I mean, this is definitely brutal. All three players spotted out. Two frags going in the way of Varius with a very solid couple of frags as Rox tries to do something. The run it back was invested, but Smurf Sickle says, no thanks. I'll put you back down as it's another round on the board for UC Davis. And they are making the first two rounds look like a fairy tale. Man, just running four straight rounds and now once again, kind of stuck with a rough buy on Sac State Green side. Uh, we do see a couple minor weapons coming out here. No real armor either. So investing in the light armor. Do you see full armor? The heavy armor coming out for Kaizen here. But Quiz running with no armor himself. So uh, really rough spot. Yeah, it, rough, rough might be a little bit of an understatement. It's certainly not ideal. Um, just to throw another understatement in there for you. And, well, on the flank now, trying to do something with the showstopper. Comes out with the G16, gets peeked out. Oh. Darian wins out the fight. Raise on raise action. The, and the raise without the bazooka wins out. Picks up the rifle. Now Rux trying to do something, but with eight bullets in the chamber, is going to have to fall back and reload that thing. And the snipe comes out from Rugs. And, I mean, have you ever been caught with your pants down with a bazooka? That is rough <laughs> right there. Uh, Rugs throwing out a little bit of a wall of uh, low end lava pool. Slaughter decides that's not going to happen. As that is going to be a couple shot cards going out. Kaizen. Uh, going to be a nice snipe, but that is still the attackers. Nice couple headshots. Ends that round. Five rounds up. Nothing to fear. I mean, maybe maybe they're not the right thing to say here, Orbital, but I'm more interested at how how exactly you got into the situation where your pants are down and you have a bazooka. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, like I just I just don't know how that happened. But uh, we'll we'll leave that to off stream for the for the thoughts. Nonetheless, uh, go to are... Mythbusters. Go to Mythbusters. <laughs> You're right, right, exactly. We are back into the rifle rounds after that eco. It was a pretty solid eco. Three kills and the shutdown on that raise ultimate. The showstopper gone, done and dusted. Back to the rifles. One player getting aggressive over here towards showers, but that's going to be quickly fallen back. No, 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 no. 16 tries to get aggressive. In fact, catches up one that psycho down. Make it two. Slaughter elsewhere, picking up one. These two duelists for the UC Davis side. Absolutely fragging out of control. It's two apiece. And when C16 has something other than a close range shotgun, he is putting in the miles. The third right there as well. Beautiful round coming out. And again, just Grace falling there. I think they will take that trade of his life for five. And man, coming out with the hard shots and the beautiful reads on a few of those rotations. They showing off why they deserve to be tied for first place right now. I mean, yeah, this is, this is very clearly I, I mean, is it fair to say it's a slaughter diff? Like, <laughs> this is, this is, is that unreasonable? I don't know, but slaughter is just playing out of his mind at the moment. 15 and 2 right now, and it's back to, you know, the not ideal weaponry. A nice curveball coming around the corner. Brace through the box, finds Quiz, even though he got away. The curveball comes in on the refrag, though. So Rux wins that fight. Not bad whatsoever. It's tagged in the process, though. It's still a four on four. Make it a four on three, though. Because elsewhere, the frag goes the way of the offense. Kate Cam not finding his mark, but Darian grabbing that one. Uh, SMG wins over main gun. That is going to be the kill. Now three on three and a couple little bounces. C16 helps Brace pick up the kill on Rux. Hank available. Going to toss it out. Uh... That is going to be the spike planet over here in B and that hard rotate coming out as Raze and Cypher decide what they're going to do. 
I mean, the, the difficult part, right, is you have a, a rifle, a, a weapon, but it's on Darian, who is relatively low HP, a 24 to be precise about it, and you're going up against three players. So like, if you, even if you trade effectively, this is just Come such a difficult out. retake, um, all things considered. It's probably more about the uh, damage that you can do here. As sneaking out on the site, well, no damage done. So three players standing is Grace. Cleans up that triple kill. It's been triple kill, quad kill, all the kills going the way of UC Davis the last couple of rounds. Yeah, and even with the losers bonus coming out here for Sac State, I mean they are just it I've I've never seen it this difficult to try and come back in a couple of rounds. Right? Uh, they are just getting spotted left and right, and uh, maybe they're just not comfortable on this defending side of this map, right? But they are looking like they're having a difficult time getting a read on where these attack are. Uh, a little bit of an A push here once again. And it's actually a fairly hard run as the running back is available to so slaughter. And he's going to try uh, and take it with you, but doesn't actually get any information. So a nice little haul off will actually put this in a five on five retake attack. Yeah, I mean, we saw everybody just giving that up. They're terrified of Slaughter for good reason. It's Slaughter takes out rocks in that fight. Darian now starting to trade things back. The four on four, the Hunter's Fury not really done much of anything there as Darian trying to throw that paint shell gets caught out in the open. The information gained though. Slaughter, the curveball, strong. Kaizen is going to be unfortunately blinded up, leaving just two players available for the retake. What was 5v5 is now two on four as this retake for the defense has just been a little bit too slow. Various winning out that fight makes it uh, uh, nigh impossible. Quiz just trying to get out with his life. Yeah, he is able to uh, very gently sneak his way back into his spawn, but eight to two here with two more rounds in the half. I mean, you see Davis showing off here, playing very, very gutsy. I mean, you know, pushing very, very quickly straight off of the open. You guys are not messing around. They want to end this as quickly as possible. They, they want to go home. They want to get some rest. They're, you know what I mean? I mean, not to be, to be fair, they're probably they are all, are all at home anyway. But you know what? <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna just roll with it. It's it's a turn of phrase. It's okay, chat. Just just crucify. <laughs> That's going to be the teleport coming out as Quiz sets up a little bit further behind. No more charges left. Positions are always nice to see 16 fighting Kaizen. Rough kill there as that leaves a B completely exposed here. A bit of a lurking though as Rux picks up the revenge kill. Nice little drop. Cool. And Slaughter is in position. Nice trade once again. Leaves it in a three on three. Rux and Darian have been so good at these trade frags, but unfortunately it's not been quite enough just yet. Quiz taking that fight on against Mercy. Tags him by a lot, but it's not enough. It does lead to Psycho picking up the, the frag on the slaughter. So now it's two on two. And this gets a little bit spicier, a little bit more interesting, Orbital. Yeah, have to take into account that that is going to be the last full health member. Uh, on the side of UC Davis, uh, Cypher living on a hope and a prayer here, about 11 HP, no armor. And with the spike not planted either, he has to get out. They know it's not planted, so they don't have to worry. Comes out through the box. Actually tagged. I think he was able to get a simple body shot off, and that's going to be the heal up once again. But still, uh, Smurf Sickle's got to play this to perfection if he wants to survive. Well, Psycho's low HP, so Psycho's not peeking. <laughs> yeah, you uh, point, point away, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let, like, let me just get straight out of there. So now the peak comes through. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Got out, oh! looks the wrong direction. Psycho, triple kill to close things out. And it's back on the board right there for UC Davis. It took a while, Orbital, but they have returned. Sac State. Yeah, and I mean, a three-round buffer round is never bad to have. If they can make it four, that's going to be great heading into the second half. You can see the Neural that's actually up for both squads as well, so I'm very excited to see if they're going to utilize that, try and get some extra information, uh, which, which is going to be entertaining because both teams, it's pretty much having a spectator map at that point, right? So I want to mm -hmm. see if they can utilize those, and then you have the Showstopper and Huntress here to clear any zone that you want. And on the flip side, uh, you have the From the Shadows coming out for Sac State. 
Uh, so, couple different utilities to work with here in the final round of the path. Eddie. Well, and look at the cash. I mean, it's definitely not ideal. You're gonna have to pull out a guardian for quiz. Uh, Kaizen has a bulldog with life. So, it's just a little bit frustrating. Hunter Fury gets pulled out, like you were talking about. Those available Ooh. rocks. Nice double kill, in fact. Holds it through, as now that showstopper comes through to take Rush out. And Brace wins the gunfight elsewhere. So it's two on three, SC16 gets aggressive and finds a third. Oh, nasty shots coming out here as Kaizen returns one more. Uh, headshots galore, you love to see it. And now a one on two situation. Kaizen really has nothing to lose. Uh, so gonna try and make a very slow push. But a little shot goes out, reveals a location. Happens, but he's hot. Check. Check. That is going to be UC Davis grabbing the first half. 93. Yeah, and, and I mean, just a good double swing, honestly. Um, you're almost never going to win that when both the opponents are in opposing corners and uh, looking opposite directions. So, a little bit tough, to be honest, for Kaizen to try and pick up. It's just been a dominant half right there on the uh i mean on the whole right it, you know we saw a good opener right there for sac state they had a good oh, a good couple of rounds in the beginning but then everything else just falling uc davis's way but most mostly though i mean it's just slaughter and c16 really doing incredible work there in the fragging department in general man yeah 17 5 from slaughter 11 and 9 from c16 and then Varys as well, uh, doing what he needs to do 10 and 4. And Smircicles, I mean, yes, his score line obviously is not the best, but he has given his team so much information to work with and enabled his team to just have a beautiful start. That's going to be Pink Camp finding their marks as Rush has to fall back to heal up. And now everyone's starting to rotate over port and window, uh, being where the firefight is starting to go down. Yeah, we see the flash. Solid there. Big one out. Darian gets spotted by the boom bot. C16 wins that fight afterward. So it's now still a man advantage available for UC Davis. As they rotate out to Sac State, want to move towards A. There's nobody home for the time being, except for the one player sitting in the lamps, and he does oh. pick up one as well. That's massive paranoia. Doesn't quite hit both, but the one player sitting close range. That was rocks. He does find the one. Gonna be able to get a bit of a heal, but it's two on one. Man, Brace holding it down with a couple of those pistol shots in the classic. Uh, I believe just dropping them where they stand. And that's going to enable UC Davis, uh, I believe, to actually come out with that pistol round this time. They lost the first half pistol round. And uh, this time around, they're like, nah, we're going to close this out. I mean, it, they lost the first half pistol round and then won the half 9-3. That's, <laughs> that's the kind of game that you see Davis has been having here on Vine, but it is best of three, remember? We do have uh, at least one more map to go to regardless, and it's never over till it hits 13. Always fight. possible for the comeback. We do see an investment there on the opposing side. The offense, Sac State, looking to try oh. and get aggressive here, but it's not working out early on. Slaughter picks up that opening duel against Darien, no more and left. it's immediately down a player on the attacker side. Yeah, that was Spectre on Spectre action as well. Uh, you know, Kaizen sitting with that Sheriff only, I believe. So losing one of your primary weapons, uh, I say primary here, but losing one of your main weapons here does feel a little bit rough. Uh, and now we can see a very slow hold into B short with the spike. So we'll see if UC Davis is able to spot that out. A couple shots go out. Uh, I believe that's the Marshall signaling that it is a little bit dangerous to walk through any long term. Oh! <laughs> Speaking of dangers, C16 in danger of getting taken out. Quiz wins that out. Here we go. Push on to A is there. Trust you, is that case not connecting? Gonna be coming to the rush. Trying to get aggressive, but that Marshall not quite enough. And now the Aries as well losing out to Rux and Quiz. They're doing it all together to a piece. This just a Smurf Stickles, who you're right, has been doing well with regard to the intelligence gathering operations but 
A little bit lower on the frags. You need to pick up four. That's already two. <laughs> Good find another here. Close oh. range, but Rux closes out the full house of frags between him and Quizzes. So we finally back on the board here for Sac State. And man, if Smurfsicles didn't just prove us wrong right there, two quick frags. I mean, I have to give him props for that, picking up those two. And then, yes, you unfortunately checked just a little bit rough. Uh, but I want to I want to give props to Sac State Green. Uh, it is pretty rough to try and force your way into some of those situations. And they literally said, hey, you have um, you have a marshal? Cool. Uh, you don't do very well when someone's pressuring you. And you can actually see at the marshal two shots completely whipped. And a very nice way to deal with that sort of buy attempt. Uh, so very well done by Sac State to pick up that round and start getting themselves back uh, in this game, potentially. Yeah, exactly. That, that's certainly a round, you know, not only in general that you need, but but morally um, very much necessary. It gets you mentally back into the game, keeps you keeps it reasonable. And so already with the main advantage in this one, the main slaughter taken down. And Darian gets aggressive onto A. Yeah, this is a this is another uh, econ round with a shorty on Smurfsicle and a hard rush attempt as well. Very quick plant coming out. See if that holds. Smurfsicle says, "Yeah, econ round, but still getting the frags. That's all I need." Grabs the specter and is going to see what damage he can do as his team always, like flies around here. Rux grabbing one for himself though. Yeah, I mean, listen, that shorty is definitely a powerful weapon, but you only good for one and um needs the close range Sir singles is like hey guys um you guys want to push me the entirety <laughs> of sac state saying yeah no you, you can hang out over there the spike's exploding you have fun and oh. indeed guys are taking him down with the sheriff laying down the law because that's a fifth on the board now for sac state yeah, and uh, now we're back to that buy round, though, right? That was the pistol round. That was the econ that they were having. Now you see Davis, they do. What? The, okay, so he's leaving it for his buddy, I think. Yeah, you see, uh, I think you see Psycho running back, went to go pick it. I was like, did he actually throw that over the wall? That is some CSGO level of trollery. No, no, no. I, I, think, <laughs> I, I, think that, I think that no one's going to pick that up because... Um, Sac State want to get rifles. They don't want to give away potentially a bonus round mm. because it's 10 to 5. They want to not take any chances and just guarantee a full rifle round here. Okay, okay. No, yeah, okay. That makes a lot more sense. I was like, is he just trolling his team? Did someone ask for a buy? I thought I saw a full <laughs> buy coming out here. Man, that is uh, some like, next level shenanigans. But we are in for the 16th round of this game. UC Davis looking to try and get a hold back. They've lost two rounds in a row. A third would be devastating for them very very quiet as everyone knows exactly what's on the line exactly they, uh, are, are ready and waiting not wanting to i think it's actually right here definitely not wanting to give up an early pick and fair enough right you have rux with this run it back you want to make sure that rux is able to try and open up a site with this ultimate and um and indeed it looks like they're going to be heading over towards b just the cypher over there towards a that's kaizen trying to make sure that there's no premature rotation as there's three players towards b though this is a pretty bad read yeah the whole run, running back immediately gets caught out but quiz says thank you for that kaizen strife finds one on the back end and psycho takes out his mirror oh they don't know it's two that massive make it three braced with the big plays is able to make it look easy now pulls oh. back out tries to pick it up but it's not enough so despite the heroics from braced it is going to be sac state green with another round as they call things back just four rounds of deficit now between these two sides yeah and, and you saw oh, at the very nice end there i think that's the blast pack to uh shot to the face or anything like that one of these signatures that raises a life to pull out here uh, just coming around the corner you're like man i thought you were gonna run in now nah, i'm coming in like an eagle baby uh picks that one up six to ten four ultimates up so from the shadows lots of movement and showstopper as well i'm very interested to see if they can use that one to a great extent and he actually pulls it out so uh, immediately going for that oh big boy. Uh, big maybe one to two frag and so he uses it early doesn't find a single target you know I, I i like that though you just try to catch someone off guard 
Um, this time it didn't work out though. So C6, maybe looking a little oh, bit <laughs> unfortunate there. And Rox wins that duel out, and the neural theft goes down. So they have the information as the rotation on A is in. Yeah, obviously they saw everyone over on B side. Say cool, only one on the back end of A. So might as well push, get that plant down. And now the retake attempt will be big. Various throwing down a couple shots. Has the Bucky in hand, wants to try to get up close and personal here. As Slaughter uses the Marshall, he says first time didn't work, second time has Brace. I think finds his first of the round. Uh, so nasty, nasty pick coming out and Rux gets that kill. Oh, no hot with the curveball. That's unfortunate, Bucky. Working its magic, close range. That's Hunter Fury, though, to win what's necessary. It was awful close. But still two players left alive there for the offense. Attack State Green lifts. Stay another round or four. Nonetheless, I mean, that was all, that was way closer than it needed to be orbital. A big eco round there. Three kills in it for the UC Davis side. Yeah, but uh, now they got to start being worried, right? They are losing rounds by the second. And I said it earlier, right? Sac State maybe just don't play defense very well on this map. Uh, or both teams are just very exceptional on the attacking side. Uh, and, and you have to be ready for these types of situations. You have to understand that this is going to happen. So I was talking about, you know, that three or four round buffer zone. They haven't really needed it. They have been crushing it from the start here. Uh, right out the gate, they only dropped one and has since run four. Do you see Davis have got to start maybe changing up their game plan, maybe sending a few people into different locations. You can actually see it now, I believe. Three on A, two on B. There's going to be a very slow movement coming in. Don't want to give away any footsteps uh, here in the early stages of this round. Certainly don't want to give too much away. Owl Drone is there for some information. The opposing Owl Drone from Darius is coming in. What will it spot? Looks like the commitment from Rux just there to try and sell that it's one player only. Wonder if that's going to be effective though. As now the rest of the utility comes out. Sonar Dart is in. Doesn't find anything on site as the, both the players committed to B are playing elsewhere in Slaughter. Winning out the gunfight against that Cypher on a, on the A side makes things a little bit more difficult now because the rotations can start to come in to push it to B. Yeah, the spike here was taken out, so I don't think they spotted the uh, spike. And now you hear the rotation call coming out. Uh, very well played, but Slaughter might find a couple. 5 1 doesn't get the second, but drops Psycho low, I believe. So, finding a little bit of work as great. Finally takes out the spike holder and Darius cleaning it up here. Can't plant when there are three aimed at your head defenders. You see Davis finally getting their second round win of the half. It was long, but they finally able to pick it up. UC Davis, I mean, four rounds in a row loss right there. And back into it, realistically, is Sac State. They have plenty of cash to buy back in. So we're going to be seeing another gun round this round. But that being said, that looked very solid. Um, I, I personally not, not loving how slow we were seeing the play come through from uh, Sac State right there when they were fully committed onto the site. Once it got found out, once the information was found from that owl drone, they had to rotate out and Slaughter already had prime position again in showers. So unfortunate, but I saw what they were trying. It just didn't really work out very well in that round. Slightly rough and just hard couple shots coming down uh, this passageway over to the showers. Uh, you know, kind of stuck and uh, maybe just trying to decoy it. As you see, four members slowly pushing in through window and port. That's going to be the showstopper being brought out. Might catch and does! Darian with the showstopper kicks things off here in the 19th round. Shock dart goes out. Various doesn't take any damage, so hold that one off. He's going to have to rotate. Give a little bit to take a lot later. See if the free kick happens. Great utility oh. usage, followed up by the Hunter's Fury. Various winning that one now. Darian goes down. As it's now a man advantage here for the defender. David was a strong psycho through the dark cover. Able to pick that frag up, but it's still a one for one now only. And that's a nice zone on our both players stuck in the corner, but it doesn't matter. The quiz! Rips out the gunfight onto 
Psycho only, and it's a big victory, as that's gonna be another round, just one for UC Davis, as they're sent back to the doldrums of the Eco. My gosh, Quiz said, nah, we ain't losing this round. And you can see a little bit of the rush, right? You saw a little bit of concern coming out on the UC Davis side. They rush that push, which, uh, or, or that attempt at the retake and the defuse, right? Normally, UC Davis, I don't think, makes those kinds of kind of sloppy plays where they leave themselves open to get picked off twice in a row. Um, I definitely feel Quiz was kind of given that opportunity, right? Uh, getting two frags right on that spike area. And I'm a little bit worried about UC Davis right now. They might be faltering uh, here at the end of this map. I mean, it certainly looks as if the yes. dominance that UC Davis is showing uh, half of the one is just simply not there at the moment. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean they can't turn it back on, but it's certainly been um, a little bit missing from the second half. And it's now just three rounds between the two teams, eight to eleven. The Sac State, they're on 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 the on the buy and on the way back up as they move towards B. Quiet as Ruck says, yeah, we're done waiting. Run it back. Toss out immediately. Toss into that smoke area. Location is revealed by the recon. Both of says can't find anyone. Gets snapped a little bit as Slaughter takes out Quiz. I have the spike. It's going to be the spike held by Psycho as he is going to quickly get it to safety in case they need to make a rotate over to A. Yeah, this is rotates orbital. It's 3v5. I mean, when you're rotating in this situation, it's just desperation times and you're you're just hoping to all hope that there's nobody home, but well, somebody is home. It's braced and Smurf signals but neither of them win out the duel. Now it's just the Marshalls T16 trying to snap through the box. Not to be. Slaughter though on the flank. Quick on the trigger. Able to pick up the one and puts it into a two on three now. The attacker's in a tough spot. Because in a tough spot, so Ruck says, cool. Let me grab another start to shield up. Marshall still in play. Marius gets the frag. Couple quick tags onto the body. Very low. Three, can he get four? The DPS keeps going. Fake diffuses end up sliver of health. Coming out right now for Marius, and that's just going to be a 4K by Ruck. Making it look easy here for the clutch. Listen, you could say that the first half was the slaughter show. This half has been the Rock show. That quad kill just showing exactly why that is. As I've been counting them down now, and we're down to two. It's the amount of rounds that UC Davis is currently leading by. And considering the economy, I mean, it is absolutely devastated. Looking horrifically bad. Just a couple of SMGs. A Bucky, granted, I mean, the Bucky is in Slaughter's hands, so you never know. Uh, <laughs> but that is a great start. Darian winning out against the, the opposing Rays. The, the Rays on Rays duel looking good for the offense. Quiet days. For quiet plays, only one kill so far, but a nice push in. Darian finds a second so far, so the leading fragger. Leading fragger, the initiator, I should say. Make sure that A site is clear. Slaughter just popping off a few shots, hoping to catch some damage. But again, it's a bucky. Can't do too much about that. Certainly makes things a little bit tough, especially at this range. That Slaughter's currently at. You, you, this is like the, the right click and spray something happens right there. Right there. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, it, it can One happen, but remaining. still, not to be. Daring. Nice job. Oh, One kill. Oh, oh. Ooh, that was some nice movement. But what more can you hope for? Could have gotten one more, but Darian, a quad kill. So back to back quad kills right there. More Sac State. They're making a big statement. They're saying absolutely not, UC Davis. We will not fall with ease. We're coming back. I mean, this is not just saying we won't fall. We're saying, hey, we deserve to be tied with you. If Sac State are able to pull off this series win, they will be tied at 2-1, and one, moving into the fourth week of the Champions Division, and they will have a shot at moving into the top four echelon, right? Mm. So this is definitely the point where they're saying, hey, we need to start taking over. We need to start showing what we're worth, and this is definitely a way to do it, taking down one of the, uh, one of the three teams tied at the top. 
and just proving that they have what it takes. And again, coming back from, I think, uh, only a three round hold. See, now 10 and 11, I would already say is a fantastic job uh, coming in here in the first map of the series. Darian throwing out the alarm bot, which is quickly taken out. Yeah, the quick dispatch there of the utility. So it does give some information over to Darren. And uh, Kaizen just trying to spam anyone who's trying to play up on top of that box. Nobody's home at the moment, though, so that's not really a big problem. As the owl goes out, it's going to spell a little bit more destruction. Rux, Kaizen not able to win that first gunfight. Makes things a little bit more difficult as the Hunter Fury is committed off the back of that Darien that wins the follow up duel. So, definitely puts them in prime position. A nice job right there on the shock dart, followed up by the showstopper. Even things up back to three to three. Man, Darien saying, hey, I want some glory too. Rux having a little hard time keeping up uh, with his top frag right now. Uh, he's holding on with about five kills different. That's a neat quiz getting dropped, and Garion falls as well. So you see Davis finally finding a round for themselves here. It's just slow going, uh, but it looks like they're going to give it DP over the brace. Let him have a, uh, maybe a little extra cash in his hand. Or no, that was already finished. I'm so sorry. I thought he got off of it early. I was like, what? Well, it's match point. Oh, but granted, only two of them available. UC Davis, it's been a great comeback on the Sac State side. And with, with the cash, I mean, they've won, they won three in a row there uh, between the two rounds that, uh, or rather three rounds that were be, being, being able to pick up on the UC Davis side. It was just difficult, I promise. We move into this round. Oh, how does Kaizen not die? What? <laughs> What just happened? Oh my why. Unfortunately, Listen. the race just has a defective bazooka. <laughs> uh, some, someone got me the defective armory equipment. Just, oh, dang it. Uh, is going to survive with 9 HP, and that's going to immediately force him back. Uh, you can see him now playing Lurker defense here, uh, hoping that he can at least lay down a little bit of damage. But the Owl Drone is going to be sent up down through that B corridor, immediately snapped out of view. Gonna have to wait and see here. Um, again, this is, I think, a good time to start playing that slow in. You know, yeah. it's a little problem. This is gonna put UC Davis a little bit on edge here. Uh, so maybe Saxate can find UC Davis slipping as they make this five man push. It's pretty clear here, though. That does make things more difficult. It's going to be the running back from the first. He needs to pick something up, but it's immediately sent oh. back by Brace. Followed up by one and a second. Rux does trade. Rux, unfortunately, having to trade his own run it back, makes it for a difficult spot. The quiz coming up big with two, in fact, is Kaisen on the flank able to find one. So now that puts Smurf Sickles in the one on two scenario. Spike makes planted. it hard. Yeah, but a total of 100 health to probably about 100 health as well. So, you know, in the health department, it's not bad, but that's going to immediately call a full uh, retreat from the site. And I actually like this play from Sac State. I believe they planned it out in a fairly open position. I can't really see just yet. Yeah, just right outside of the box. So they can easily see if anyone's going for it. So Spurn Sickles has to take both of them out if he wants to try and get that win. Oh, 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 quiz. That's a very nice trade frag. And it is now 11 to 12. Couldn't get any closer or put all the answer is absolutely not. As we are looking into the eyes of potential overtime here. I am waiting with bated breath here. Sac State Green coming up huge after uh, faltering nine rounds in half one. This would be an immaculate way to bring it back, right? And, uh, you know, really proving that they have what it takes to play with those big dogs, too. Uh, and, and there's a reason they're in the champions division, right? So this is it. All the marbles here. Pressure is on Ye Sac State, UC Davis. What you two got in the tank? Well, unfortunately, the armory was a little low on funds. So it's not ideal for the UC Davis side. They do have a couple of shotguns, a couple of SMGs, just one rifle. That is on slaughter, though. 
there's anyone who wants to have that slaughter. Information game here, pushing on A. Darian, though, takes out that one rifle what? and follows it up on his first sickle, so it's an immediate two-player advantage. Absolutely massive. The Hunter oh, Fury, though, returning to Frag. Various winning that one out. It's now, it's all down to the four on three here. Attackers need to pick it up. Yeah, Judge drops one to Psycho out of this fight. A couple more shotgun shots go out. Picks up the Phantom. 18 health on C16. Three on three here. Race very, very low. Yes, the side though. One more can't do it. Darian gets a 3k, but it's two on two. Barry drops it low. It's a one on two situation. This is oh! all the marbles, and they don't find it. Sack State falter. They were about to tie it up, but you see Davis hang on. They will take map number one Defenders in a 13 win. to 11 nail biter. Oh my goodness, devastating victory, or devastating victory, devastating loss for Sac State Green. Oh no, they fought back tooth and nail, Orbital. The entire second half, they were, they were just throwing it all in there, going for it, but it wasn't enough. Barely unable to cross the finish line at the last, the crucial moment with that player advantage. And oh man, that's just got to be rough, man. Going in, I mean, how do you follow up a map like that? You say you were one step from victory, and it came down to the skill, right? Just taking a look at the score lines, right? Rux and Darian popped off second half. They went from I think single digit kills to twenty two and eighteen, nineteen and twenty. You know, these guys really kicked it up said hey we can play with the top dogs and, and and it was only a two round difference right they were ready to tie it up so they can't feel bad about that right they ran it back and now we get to see if they can pull it off here on the second uh second map and see if that uh if they have what it takes uh now my big question is, is of course maybe shore up your attacking or defense or the weak side of the map that you're playing right you got three rounds three or four rounds before aim for maybe six aim for an even half because you know you can play from behind. You already know all that stuff. So give yourself a little bit wider berth and maybe you can avoid a situation where you are fighting at the very last step to beat your opponent. Yeah, definitely don't want to have to to make that comeback, right? That, that's the key. Um, you know, certainly was a great comeback. Don't get me wrong. But if you don't have to, you know, if you, if you just have to get like six rounds instead of have to fight back, um, you know, those seven rounds deficit the first half plus four more, you know, then maybe you're in a better position. So we're going to just hold on, take a little bit of a breath and try and figure out what to do about this matchup because it was an exciting map one. We're going to be prepped for map two, but we need to take a quick little break first. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after this.
What will you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. And welcome back here after a fantastic map number one that almost saw us go the distance into overtime, but UC Davis clutching it out with that last round win. Uh, again, here going to map number two, Ascent, coming out here. So uh, once again, welcome back to the NECC stream. Uh, big shout outs to all of our sponsors, one of them being Meta Pro Gaming, which is a full service esport management, developmental, and consulting company. So if you are interested uh, in getting maybe an esports coach, uh, college esports management, arena design, or equipment for any of your organizations, go ahead and visit them over at metaprogaming.gg to learn about uh, a little bit more about what they have to offer there. Uh, but talking about this now, again, both these squads showing complete domination. Uh, not complete, I would say, but fairly strong uh, contingencies 
for their attacking strength. Oh no. Oh no, Orbital has gone gone the full distance. You got <laughs> you got the full <laughs> Metroid. Oh no, it's turned into a robot. Are you back finally, Orbital? Uh, I, I think so. I think so. Am I here? Right. Am I here? Yes, you are here. Right. You are here. Very Wonderful. Welcome back, mate. <laughs> Very sorry. <laughs> Let, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more again, though. Uh, maybe I, I think I might have gone through. I don't know. But uh, asking the question once again, uh, these squads both showed very strong attacking sides. Mm -hmm. uh, defense, a little bit weak. You know, have to kind of uh, critique them on that, giving up a couple rounds. Uh, very slow on the uh, kind of dealing with all of these changes in the pacings. Do you think we're going to see this happen on Ascent as well? Or, or do you think maybe these teams might have a better handle on the defensive side? Well, you know, it's interesting, right? I, I think that Ascent a little bit more defensive-sided than Bind is. Um, so I think by that, at least a little bit more defender um, objectives working out in their favor. That being said, though, I really do think it comes more down to the teams and the play style than anything else. We just saw some flat-out aggression um, all the way around <laughs> there from both sides on their uh, attack side. Um, both of the Phoenixes doing well. That was Slaughter and Rux um, pretty much picking up frags left, right, and center, as well as the raise, raises um, making making a name for themselves. Though I will say, I, I have to be honest, I, I think that potentially Darien won that duel out against C16. Maybe that's controversial. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> nonetheless, nonetheless, it was it was a solid showing from both both of these sides, and I think that going into ascent, Select it's going to be slightly agent. more defensive sided, but not by much. You are just straighting out pulling fire. You are just straight up trying. You have the tinder box just lighting yep. a little <laughs> bit of, of fire there. So uh, I love it so uh, much, though. Uh, we also saw, uh, I really like to point this out because I'm personally a huge fan of it. Uh, we saw the marshal come out a little bit. Uh, in map one here on ascent i think has a few longer quarters so hopefully get to see some opting coming out uh, i would love to see that and see what they can pull off but here we go game number two map number two here on ascent uh, i do believe that we do have uc davis over on the defending side where as on attack and sac state will try their hand at picking up a few crucial rounds I just realized you're absolutely right. We didn't see a single operator in, in a bind. Not a one, I don't remember. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. I, I did not even pick up on that uh, at the time. That's that's not usual. Something you don't often see. Sure, it's not it's not nearly as good as it is here. But still, yeah, certainly interesting. And, well, I think with, with two jets on the board, C-16 and Quiz, uh, something we didn't necessarily see last time, more than likely going to be picking that up, uh, that weapon, uh, even though it is very expensive. Uh, we are seeing the setup. It's over towards B here for Sac State, as it looks like they're just running it down B, no problem. As they put in a lot of damage though, coming through his first sickles with those nano swarms doing massive work and taking a frag. So a one for one trade is already online. Man, Sac State said we ain't wasting time. We got a chance at that. <laughs> Brace. I love Brace so much. He is coming out with some cuts plays, but here with a classic said, now let's just drop four straight in your face. Right into the back corner. Be back. Is going to be the high corner slaughter. Coming around the side. One more shot is going to do it. Brace picks up two. Might get three. Is he going to get it? Yes, he does. And that is going to be a 3K to start things off with the defuse going to the MVP of the round. Yeah, and we, we were talking about Brace, right? How impactful this player was last game, or last map, I should say, um, and continuing to do that. There, pistol round already looking solid for UC Davis as we are, honestly, by the way, compositionally, I didn't mention Orbital. I, I do really like that we are seeing the Breach come out for Rux, something that we don't necessarily always see her in the North American region, but um, absolutely amazing. On, on this map, if used correctly. Um, that being said, the, the win rate, don't look at it. It doesn't actually tell that story, but I'm gonna keep <laughs> I'm gonna keep running with that narrative until I'm told to stop. That's basically how this goes. 
Yeah, and I, and I always find it interesting, uh, as much as the meta is such a standard, right? There's a reason to literally call the meta as a quiz just wants to shut me up. Drops two with that specter, one a headshot, one a body, I Gun believe. Here. And that's going to be a quick two for one. Here. And on the flip side, we did see the Sova get dropped. Quick rotate over B, and maybe I'll be able to finish my statement later after this round. <laughs> is, it, is that the second round in a row that Smurf Singles has picked up a frag with Banana Swarm? That's two rounds, two frags, both with Nano Swarm. <laughs> <laughs> just like, nah, let's just sit in this giant swarm of whatever is here. As a brace is sitting right on the other side of the open, and there he is. Flint that firefight. Uh, you gotta love it. Snap out as Slaughter gets dropped, and Darian finds the back line to pick once again. C16. Last one to fall as Sac State go ahead and grab their first round victory. Alright, Orbital. I wanna know. I wanna know what your point was. You don't even remember, <laughs> do you? I, uh, I, I, I do because to me it's always. Uh, I love innovation, right? Uh, Again, there's a reason the meta is the meta. Uh, it, there's, it, it's literally an acronym for like the best played champions, right? Or best played agents that have the most impact. But the teams that can always utilize those very rarely played agents, you know, uh, maybe the Viper coming out, uh, maybe that Sky that just somehow it fits in your composition. Those are the teams that you really have to watch out for because they are the ones that grind for hours, uh, finding that simple little exploit or that simple. Uh, very strong combination that maybe you just weren't expecting. Yeah, it's always interesting. Slaughter coming around that corner got absolutely laid out, so unfortunately goes down. C16 as well, tagged very low, 15 HP to their name. It is now, it is a man disadvantage at the, for the time being. And uh, honestly, we didn't even, we realistically didn't even mention that it was a round victory for uh, Sac State in the last round, but whatever. We, we, you saw the scoreboard. We, you didn't need us to take you through it. Nonetheless, it's trades back and forth here in this key round. Brace not quite ready for the player on the left side. But winning out the duel seems to be the defense. It's Kaizen. Left in a one on two, one player tagged down pretty low. In fact, gets that frag. Now with 72 HP, it's the Killjoy versus the opposing Killjoy. And well, looking to be an interesting duel. Not able to hit the shots though. This guy's in strides to Smurf Sickles. Wins that out, picking up what is it? Only two of the four kills that they have with a real weapon. You know, you know why Smurf Sickles won that? Why? You know why? He crouched. Whole reason, oh. whole reason. There was a crouch in there. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. Uh, I, I do believe, though, I do like to see that, you know, making sure that you set your aim as much as possible. And uh, decided against keeping, uh, I believe, the Aeris, which uh, I love how bulky that weapon is. Said, grabs a Vandal and says, cool, let's get back to a standard style of play. Yeah, and, and that's just a great response right there, by the way, from UC Davis. Um, winning out that round in pretty brilliant fashion. In fact, pulling out one of those operators that we were discussing in the pre-game, uh, pre the first couple of rounds, right? We hadn't seen very many of those, but C-16 on the jet, picking up the first frag and, well, doing a great job of the, the operator play already here. Now, with the curveball in hand... That is going to be Slaughter. A little bit slow. Last time we saw him immediately pop up. Psycho actually lining up. Love seeing these cheeky shots of the recon. You gotta love when these uh, Sobas know every single inch of the map just to play the card. I'm ready for it. I want to see it this round again. The Nanosaur Prag. I've been given it twice. I now need it again. Flash comes out. <laughs> not on target though. Psycho somehow survives for much longer than would have been reasonable, but there he is with the double kill in return to trade things out. So it's still even across these two sides as the well, that's an interesting teleport. I'm not quite sure. It was just for information. And information was gained. Two players along the crosswalk or the sidewalk rather. There he is. Frag making two. Oh. Not quite enough to pick up the third. Quiz able to shut that down. It was close. But we have returned to a tied game. 
Yeah, and I mean, look at the two top fighters both sitting at five of keys. So Quiz embraced the two to kind of watch. And, uh, you know, we were talking about some of the key players that came out. Rux, uh, I believe Rux, Psycho, and Quiz were the top three fighters for uh, the side of Sac State Green in map one. On the other side, uh, Slaughter was pretty far up there with, I think, C16 and Smurfsicles rounding that one out. So um, it's kind of crazy to see how these teams each have, even the individual players, have maps that they seem to excel on to a much stronger uh, extent. And Darian just popping that cross courtyard shot. A uh, little bit of nasty aim there. That was disgusting, man. I shot him down before even really he had a chance to do much of anything. And so that does give over a main advantage now. And nice catch there as well to bring the utility over towards mid. A shot attempted from the jet, but that's not going to be there for very long. C16 tagged down heavily. One HP, in fact, by the way. Oh, that's that's devastating. He's just like, man, I should have just died. <laughs> I have one HP. What, <laughs> what, can I, what can I do with this? Uh, well, we'll see. I mean, C16 has pulled off some nutty stuff. I think Map 1 was running around with a judge getting a couple of headshots. Uh, and so I will never count this player out. Right, just some crazy plays coming through, and especially anyone that is put on the jet. Uh, I feel the team has high confidence that they can play this agent. They're able to make the plays happen. So I want to see uh, possibly looking for a play for a quick tag. Oh, yep, never mind. You are correct. Uh, I believe that is going to be 16 drop. Kaizen and Smurfsicles drop deep left and right. Various grabbing Kaizen. So the Killjoys take it off the map. One on two. And the is going to make the play. Does get one. Might get two. And Omen slow on the rotate. This might be the clutch up that Quiz was looking for. Oh, spots him out. Oh. That's key. Now knows where he's coming from. But oh, tag oh. through the wall. The side of the wall. So key now. 11 HP. That's so brutal as now it's just a matter of the timing quiz uh -oh. Uh -oh, there we go. Oh, 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 but not quite there race winning that out and it is back and forth the pendulum is swinging and it is no one really taking control just yet here orbital nasty thrifty round and that was just a combination of well-timed play coming out of sac state green Plus an unfortunate rotation rotation by UC Davis, right? The Omen brace, a little bit rough on there, was trying to make the rotate. If you were there earlier, I think, um, uh, I think that would have gone a lot smoother. Of course, they did get the round uh, win, I believe. But still, like, you know, very rough, a lot closer than it probably should have been. Uh, I feel that, uh, I feel that Quiz should not have been allowed to set up way. that well right in the back, but... Uh, again, very nice round win on an on a beach, more or less. And now coming out with the big guns, we do see an Odin as well as an Op breaking in with the band. Well, big guns are there, but that does mean round victory here with devastating economic. Now the push comes in. Great finds the first. That's well. Oh my oh, God. God. <laughs> I mean, I literally, I literally blinked. Look at the line of bodies just right there. That's just ridiculous orbital. Oh, various. That was incredible. Uh, the best part was all three of the last kills came yes. from various is Odin. That was the most amazing thing. <laughs> oh, was, this is why you run those big guns. You get the big play. So yeah, Odin, making the best of just an amazing attempt and i will say sac state coming out with the big uh big attempt right now uh, running against what you already know is a nasty gun composition uh very strong attempt and at least they push as a team that's what i can give them for that round still played out five in a row not what you like to see as the courtyard comes in with some fire yeah, I mean, you have, to, you have to give credit for that at the very least. But they do have the rifles back online. So certainly could be plausible. And Kaizen going to be winning out that gunfight against Slaughter. Remember, the big fragger from the last game having a little bit of a slower start this time around. But that's okay. It's not, I mean, to be fair, Various is just popping off the floor. So like, uh, who, who cares? It's, it's just as if they're taking turns at this point. And... Well, speaking of taking some turns, it is the turn of the attackers to hit A once more. As the ultimate rolling thunder 
Gonna be hitting A as well. Here out of sight, and there's nobody there. Gonna be a quick drop as well. A couple little shots going out, and we now have a B attempt. Defender lockdown. Gonna be dropped as well. As the attack is up here, I'm not sure if this is where he wants to use it. He is way too much time. They're actually gonna throw it down. They are gonna throw it down. Two minutes will be locked. Uh, no, they get the lockdown. They got the lockdown so well done, and Psycho and Kaizen are holding this one down. Now in a four-on-one position, no way Brace makes it out of here. Oh, that was so well played. Sac State Green taking out one of the most important ultimates in this game when it comes to defending a site. I mean, I don't know how they got it. It was so close. <laughs> I was honestly uh, like, what, oh. Uh, three seconds left. It was three seconds left, I believe. Was it three seconds? It felt closer than that. I'm going to be honest. That was just, <laughs> I, I, I was like, oh, well, the hunter, so the Hunter's Fury, right, came out in order to try yeah. and get rid of the lockdown. But the problem was that it missed. <laughs> and so they had to find the lockdown elsewhere. And, uh, well, it worked Not out really nonetheless. Idea. Honestly, just a great adjustment right there. Not panicking uh, or sack state. Normally, you know, you, you have that set play. You're holding the Hunter's Fury for that that exact purpose and it, and mm -hmm. you don't get it and you're like oh crap we're just screwed but no sac state kept their head made sure to make the adjustments and did exactly what was necessary there to pick up the round yeah and uh, again i want to see uc david squad as the operator just takes a little bit of a peek oh quiz quiz is trying quiz wants it that's gonna be the drop he gets it the operator's out of quiz unfortunately watch c16 just run straight into a wall i think um i think Thought he was gonna get behind the wall instead, but it certainly runs into a barrier. Grabs one as well. That's gonna put everyone into a four on four situation. The barrier sitting at 30 HP. Uh, not exactly where you want to be. Oh my goodness, he just read it. He read it like a book. Absolutely wrecked. Oh, that's absolutely wonderful. I love to see that. The Odin through the wall. Easy does it. And it just shuts this push down. Rux has now got to figure out what to do. Picks up one frag. It's even three on three, but it's going to have to be through the spawn. The defense trying to pick something up. Smurf Stickles wins out the duel against Darian, who is in the back. Now has to come up big once more. 13 seconds. And this is going to be it. Paranoia. Oh, the fake. He got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful play. Finds all three. He is cold with that stuff, man. He is cold. Mid round drops the classic on him. Oh, you love to see it. And I mean, this match right now, it is so close. This is way closer than in map one, I feel, in the early stages. Five to three. And yet, both teams have output some amazing plays thus far. Right, beautiful job. The lockdown uh, takes have been fantastic from both squads. And uh, I am, I mean, if this map is gonna continue this way, I honestly will probably lose my voice at the end of the evening. <laughs> I'm feeling the same way. I, I got another one here after. I can't do that, but oh, <laughs> quiz. Just absolutely stone cold with it. He peeked, at, he peeked out just a little bit. It was a shoulder and the tip of the head. And Quiz is like, no, ceiling. He's <laughs> absolutely yeah. demolishing players as they swing out through that smoke. And so it's a lot of map control here available as well as that man coming in with the shock dart, trying to get some damage done. Just a little bit, not quite enough as the push comes through onto the A side. Yeah, and that's going to be a shadow use from the attacking Omen side as well. So, Darian trying to reposition, actually floats over to mid catwalk, and that's gonna be the Hunter's here going out. Smurf finds the pick, again, clearing out that bottom bunker area, and Quiz jumping right back down. So, able to stay alive, hold on this point, but it's a three on three, rest of the team trying to shoot over, and he gets it, Quiz! What in the world is the baller? What's going on? And there comes the Darian! Oh, Odin, probably gonna save the day, Various does drop brace, gets Darian, and that's gonna be the walk around as Kaizen with the massive flank says thank you for the round i mean my draw is my jaw is currently on on the floor right now i, I that flank i don't it just is so big brain the the long con coming through from kaizen you love to see that and on top of things i i just i really like how patient 
we were seeing the offense play right there. Sac, Sac State, they, they, they didn't get too aggressive. They didn't get too far ahead of themselves. They played it passively when way. necessary, but obviously taking advantage of the opportunities that were given to them by UC Davis, for example, 16, getting a bit too aggressive towards mid, and just honestly wonderful and really interesting to watch. Yeah, with the blade storm now quiz looking to drop another on c16 he has done so much work but now sitting on 59 hp and no armor We're gonna make it a little bit more difficult to pull this play off a little bit of a hold over to a lobby looks to be the potential route as a complete push forward shot over on b main as well a little bit close with the turret and that's gonna call the rotate you can see multiple members moving through the defender uh spawn near quiz trying to drop that turret as best as possible Man, that, that turret, it feels like it has a million health when you just have a pistol, let me tell you. <laughs> like, it, I, I know it doesn't do that much damage, but it's it's just painful to deal with. It's just like, you click it like four times and it's just not dead, and you're like, come on, man! <laughs> it's like, if you were a person, you'd be dead. be a basic dead. ability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But oh. nonetheless, we're back in it. That rotate, left. looking strong, and in fact, Varius, the one player on the site, not able to really do much in that swarm grenade. Going to be able to push out the one player. And in fact, Slaughter dies for the trouble. Rux heard the information as he ran away. He got that frag. What? There's two frags in return. It's three on three orbital. Yeah, health advantage over to Sac State right now. And they have the plant as well. Little positioning straight to the back. And that's the defender kill droid. Once again, and no ultimates this time to be able to save them. Very nice positioning. And they're just, they just got to wait out. Yeah, they're going to force the push. A couple strange going to be pushing up on the side of B site. And they find it. Rush finds the team found. Oh, the mad lad did it. My gosh. Such a save coming in from the breach. Oh, my goodness. I love to see that rush. Absolutely brilliant plays. And we are all tied back up. Man, this has certainly been a closer half than our first game. And, oh, it's just been so back and forth, right? Like, no, nobody really taking more than two rounds in a row. Um, and in fact, barely, barely doing that, either of these teams, as they trade back and forth. Only the second time that two rounds in a row have, have been gained here just now as we are approaching the last couple of the half. It is going to be a save, though, for the uh, side of UC Davis. They are not really going to have enough cash, so they want to make sure they have plenty to buy into the last round of the half. As, and it's already an advantage game. It's just been clinical stuff here early rounds the last few for Sac State they just really have not been giving anything away they have not as they can clear out a picking up one in the main one right outside market that's going to call the rotate a little bit of a hold as Darian just calls it smurcicles uh, like you said econ round but the kills don't hurt any less when you're getting dropped that quickly it certainly is different <laughs> you know, you're just like, oh, I don't have anything. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and yeah, you gotta try to do something with nothing. And right now, Player it's not standing. quite there. Darian pointing out that very as well. So, a really solid econ round or anti eco round, I should say. Flawless in fact the for the Sac State side as we are into the final round of the half. <laughs> They're going back to it. I love seeing that this is actually a standard. Normally, you see like you know five vandals coming out, or five vandals and uh, or vandals and, and maybe a couple specters and all that. No, they just go straight back to the Odin and the operator as their main. Pra I love it. I don't care what anyone says. Various on this Odin and C16 uh, hasn't had two great rounds with the uh, operator. Maybe the third time is charm. Maybe we can start seeing some nasty snipes. That is well known. In just about every FPS. Yeah, I mean, listen, the, the walls are thin. They're paper over there at B, so that Odin certainly... Paper mache be. rocks, that's what we're working with? I mean, they <laughs> might as well be, honestly. Yeah. Uh, over at B, so that, I mean, that's where that Odin's so powerful, especially when you get the info with the sonar darts. But yeah, a nice and slow opening right now for Sac State. This is the kind of default round that you'd love to see. They're just, they're, they're basically saying, they're, they're daring UC Davis 
Hey guys, you know how you've been peeking, giving us free frags at the beginning? Why don't you continue doing that? But UC Davis, they have definitely made some adjustments. They are playing very passive, not giving anything at all away, and I really like this adjustment. I also like the fact that they're holding the Odin all the way in the back. They don't want to give any information out of the fact of where that spray and frame might go. Holding very long and immediately that information goes out. That's going to be a first sickles dropping in some pain. Six two frags with E.T. Davis are up 5-3. Spike is planted. But it doesn't matter now. It's back two members and that's going to be a quick pick. Smurf sickles having a freaking blast here. That's going to be a quick pull. That is a flawless victory here. Coming out against E.C. Davidson. Vincent, we asked for it, right? It was very close in the first game. This time, it's straight off of the first half. 6-6. Six, six. Brilliant stuff coming through from both of these teams. And I have to say, that the this half right now, the utility usage from Smurf Sickles has been incredible. Um, like Smurf Sickles, we didn't necessarily talk about a whole lot in the first game. Weren't necessarily getting tons of frags, but was doing their job with the utility on the Cypher. Um, this time though, not only getting a lot done with that utility, but getting kills with it, getting frags with the, the rifles as well, leading the scoreboard for the entire team. I mean, absolutely brilliant stuff. I really love to see that. And, and of course, Killjoy here is very powerful just anyway, but it's it's really awesome to see um, the likes of Smurf Sickle stepping up in such a big way. And I, and I want to say, you say, you talk about the lockdown. I want to say he's done that without the lockdown, right? Yes. Both lockdowns that we've seen so far have been knocked out. That's very rare. Usually you see at least two members locked down. That's how uh, Killjoys tend to get a couple easy frags. They've done without it. That has to be commended. And it's just like, that's a good chunk of your kit that you don't have. Um, getting back into this game, a full A push means that the site is planted here on A. And a full five man as well. Nice little smokes up to the Raptors. And that's going to stall the push. Very nice setup here for a little bit of crossfire as the door has been broken and that's gonna be a little bit of damage Dropping down right on that a link and quick smokes as well Gonna start pushing out and that's gonna be a shock full kinding underneath the raptor such a well placed by that defending soba a couple quick picks once remaining. again and various popping off with that pistol round brace picks up two and That is going to be the attacker eliminating the defender yeah, I mean, UC Davis just looking to be in control. Winning the gunfights there in general, but also the utility, I, honestly, I thought was in Saks Teeth's advantage. Did you see the uh, the earthquake come through? Uh, the E from, from the from the breach? It got two people. It, it, it stunned two people in, in one one quake, and you're like, oh, that's cool. You love to see that. And, uh, and so, in general, lots of great utility usage right there for Sac State, but UC Davis, they were able to win the gunfights anyway. Catch from main to sight. As they say, we know you're going, but I and Rock run a bit of interference, at least dropping two, so a nice little drop of some important members, but very with that Bulldog, uh, some gun that we don't normally see. That's going to be the attackers coming out with the victory that we expected. But again, dropping two on an eco round, I think they'll be at least somewhat okay with that. Okay, so fun fact that breach ability is called a fault line. I could not remember it. Uh, so I had to go look. It, it was bothering me, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, if you were unaware, it's called a fault line. Uh, I said earthquake, so I feel like I was close enough. That is where earthquakes it's, it's happen pretty, on a yeah. fault line. So you know, a what? geologist might get upset at you, but you know, right, right, right. You know, <laughs> but, but are there any geologists right here? We're gonna go with no. I don't know though. Uh, all the Someone's geologists in chat it. are bad. You are, <laughs> you are <laughs> all right, so this time B side is the first me. It's gonna be holding a quick rotate. Take a look, Killjoy runs all the way around. So. Spot for the flank and quick one one. Psycho gets dropped by Brace. That's gonna be the plant coming out of various this time around. A nice little setup. Health bar is also in their advantage. That's the four on three advantage. It's gonna be a spawn hold by Darian. Waiting for the rest of the team to collapse, but positioning coming out inside B site and main uh back, sorry, are very, very well coordinated. 
Yeah, I mean, with the weaponry online as well for the defense, like, it would be, it'd be a miracle, honestly. But then to pick this up, could get one with that swinging oh, out is a well, okay. Everyone's swinging out, and everyone falls. That makes it easy. <laughs> well, that's a very nice start to this half. Three of those rounds in a row now for the half. And you love to see that, right? Especially if you're a UC Davis fan. Um, uh, you know, picking up the frags where necessary. And so now the rifles get pulled out. An, an operator online for Quiz, a player we have been seeing all game pull off some amazing work. Now the operator is in hand. What can they do with it? Uh, pray that the body makes a couple kills, right? So far, the operator has not seen a lot of work done i think c16 tried to run it as well and just kind of really faltered right we just haven't seen these snap kills be as potent as we usually even with the marshal right we've seen some of these snipers come out just not the most adept right now so uh, hopefully pick up one or two frags get that all important man advantage here on the 20 side because again you're down uh, about four rounds from losing and so you want to start turning it around you don't want let you don't want this to be the runaway that uc davis gets yeah, and remember, UC Davis already a map ahead in this series. Big victory there. Slaughter winning out on the oh. rocks. Who is playing in the corner there? Not really aware. A little bit early on that peak is Slaughter, but Brace wins out the fight elsewhere. So it's still a two for one trade. All things considered, four players available on the defense of this site for the attackers. And that's a little bit of an aggressive teleport. Luckily, nobody taking a look at where that is. So Darian doesn't go down. Smurf Sickles, though, on the generator. Wins up that fight. Darian pulling oh! up two for one trade, but it still just leaves Quiz. Operator in hand, having to get out of here. And Barius looking to get aggressive. Knows where this player is. Doesn't hit the shot, though, as Quiz runs for the hills. But it's not enough. Unable to sneak around the corner. That's a very nice job in recovering the operator in Barius. And, you know, I hate to say it, I asked this question earlier, right before we started map number two. I was asking, you know, do these teams consistently feel stronger on the attacking side? Do they feel that this is their, you know, their MO? They give up a few on the defending side. And, and granted, it is somewhat difficult if you're playing against an equally aggressive team. But UC Davis, it doesn't matter what map they're on, their attacking squads feel so clean. Right, it feels like it is just all they practice instead of having uh, two halves. It's literally just, just playing like 26 rounds of attack. And that is how the team that they have gotten in Slaughter. Dropping a man, Psycho. Grabbing one in return with that Bucky. That's going to be cover being dropped by Darian. Let's see. You should that run. steady, but uh, attacker Killjoy being dropped. So can't walk in just yet. This is gonna make awkward. Oh! Speaking of which, what is that? Through the dark cover, Psycho goes down. If I'm Psycho, I'm absolutely tilted off the back of that one. And now it's just two players on here for the mine. defense. They didn't have the re the weaponry to be fair at the start of this round, but they certainly don't have the players or the weaponry now. Two stingers in hand. That is probably the worst feeling. Literally watching your teammate get into the cover and get dropped. CCC. All right, proving that he just doesn't care. Is he going to get another no? He cannot, but that's enough time for the Odin to make it work. It looks like they're going to save the Having the blast, saving that one. And C16 coming back with this one. I think uh, first half didn't have a great showing on it, of course. Mm. This time, popping off a 2k, uh, two frags to help secure that round win for his team. They're now two rounds away from clearing this 2-0 and keeping the champions uh, kind of style of how to win a series alive. Yeah, it definitely has been a good turnaround thus far from C16 and UC Davis in general. As I'm, I'm on the lookout here for this Rolling Thunder. That's the ultimate. Which there's a lot of them on, on line seven. In fact, the opening frag does go the way of Sac State. So that is a good start. <laughs> Varys got surprised right there. You see him go, what the? Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> like, Whoa, what happened? Yeah, you ever seen real. a player literally jump in game? That was it. That's 
I, I love that so much. I, I, I do it all the time, man. I hate doing that. I hate doing it. I'm, I'm like, I'm, anyway, I, I, won't, I won't expose myself any further than necessary. But as we are into it, it is the players gripping up towards B. But both of these A players who are meant to be do, holding off the rotates, meant to be selling a fake, they've died. Still three players committed over here, though, so the entirety of B-side is open. Brace is at 1 HP. This is so difficult right now. UC Davis are in a tough spot. Yeah, and uh, Quiz came out and said, bruh, you got an op, I got an op, let's trade it. Let's see what happens, and I mean, it worked. That hold, like you said, was fantastic. Now we see a courtyard rotate. Couple little zones going out as left. the omen. Uh, that is going to be Brace holding on to that spike. It hasn't been spotted yet. So that is a good thing. You haven't seen any pings go out just yet. However, winding down on time. This is getting close. They got to start pushing somewhere. Throwing Thunder could come out to, to deny the entirety of this. One. So low on time. Oh, Kaizen! Kaizen! It's 4-5! Oh! The ace for Kaizen on the round. Incredible. That was the slowest burning ace I've ever seen, but absolutely wonderful. Finds the opening pick, then 30 seconds later gets a second, and then closes one, two, and three out on the last minute site push. Beautiful stuff from Kaizen. Welcome to the 7-Eleven. How can I help you right there? Uh, that was just a culmination of unfortunate timing, right? Winding down to the very last second forces them to punch through that A link when Kaizen was ready. Just mows them down where they stand. Such a well done job. And, uh, now we're seeing some nasty pushes here. Yeah, this, that was actually a very fast push. You saw Quiz just run and gets dropped. Blade Storm, baby. Drop on him in. Nice job from Rock to spin back. He runs back. Spike now that spike gets planted, though. There is the Rolling Thunder that I was talking about, though. That could be the key here to opening this uh, this back up for the defense. They are they are a player down. There's no fakes, dude. There's no retake coming here. Oh, buddy hopping the way to victory, except this is jet hopping here. You saw him bounce his way all the way through, I believe. Oh my gosh, so well done. And that's actually gonna be it. You were talking about the rolling thunder, I believe. One enemy through that site, and now dropping a few holes as the attacker just cleaned up c16 doesn't have the blade sword anymore but gets a nice little frag with the classic that's gonna put uc davis in winning position 12 to 7 here at sac state green gotta come up with something they want to stay in this game yeah i i will say I, i'm a little bit miffed right now orbital so they they did commit both the the, the rolling thunder and the lockdown right um on the sac state side but they committed it so very late um, on the mm -hmm. retake. It just is a little bit weird. Um, and so because of that, it, it, honestly, I think it caught off guard a lot of the players for UC Davis, but it just didn't work oh. out. But, oh, that's beautiful. Quiz saying, listen, man, we might not have won that last round, but I'm definitely giving us a chance to pick this one up. <laughs> He wants to make that highlight reel for the week, right? Just like, look, bro, I will get my frags one way or another. Uh, I don't care if I have to patch with an L on my name uh, for this series. I will get it. And that's going to be a very nice tag. A little bit of a frazzled member. Because this time you see Davis having some tough times over here. Uh, B Lobby and Main being their graveyard. Methodical. That certainly is a quiz coming around the corner. Taking off the head of C16, operator taken out. So two players in the advantage here. As Quiz maybe saying, "Listen, I, I, I've seen there was a there was a nice little uh, a, a nice little ace from from Kaizen. I want I want an ace too. Give it to me." <laughs> Not with the op this time though. With that vandal, um, I mean, if this was an op ace, I would lose my mind. That would be disgusting. Left. To watch happen i've used that word so many times now and i'm i know it's gonna be done but remaining. that's all dairy is. Dairy, <laughs> like, Bro, that? that was my kill that was mine <laughs> i have my name on it Versicle, <laughs> <laughs> so finding out that eight is a little Ten bit exposed still has the spike so in all that chaos finally gets the plan down with only a couple seconds to spare 
Very nice job by Smurf, and now it is a one-on-three situation. Got to pull out the four. Hey, wants to get that win. Can't do it. Quiz instead finds the four. It's gonna get that DPS. Very nice round indeed for Quiz. As well, I, I, I think Quiz should just say that has one away from the Blade Storm. I think they might be waiting to get an offer. That's gotta be really good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like that call. Uh, pick up that op. I think that'll probably go to quiz again. And actually, Dan, pick up. Nice. Oh, uh, did he? Uh, they, they were contemplating it. You can see it. He's like, bro, just do it. Just do it. <laughs> he, was ask he was asking the teammate. He was like, hey, uh, so you want this Odin? He's like, ah, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was thinking about it, though. Definitely looking to get a little spicy there. Nonetheless, it is a couple of rounds now fought back, but it's still got to have to be four more in a row. Backs against the wall here, Sac State. They are up against not only map point, but match point here. UC Davis up one already in this series. Yeah, now that you have a defending Killjoy lockdown available, right? A long point hunter series, this could signal big trouble if they are not careful. That's gonna be the lockdown being dropped. They're trying to hold over on this B and they are pushing. They want to see this happen. Everyone waiting outside, remember, they have a little bit of time to work with. Curveball ready in hand. This is gonna be a firefight to remember. Plant is down, second ticket away. Five on five that the entirety really of that site given up for free now it's both sides looking to try and trade out some of this util get information but all five players sitting ready and waiting here on the site the information oh. gets through practice away kaizen with two but he's back and forth kaizen though winning it out against c16 who couldn't pick up the triple kill that's 918 Kaizen's name to be, bring us to a ninth round. And oh, that is so close. I am honestly so impressed with Sack State 3. And I am saying that from the bottom of my heart this time. Twice in this series, they have been down multiple rounds. They've been on that side where they are looking uh, at a loss in the face. And yet, both times, they have been fighting back. This time, they they feel like they have the momentum, right? That was ultimates against ultimates. Normally, it's very difficult to win those. Uh, and, and they come out with 9 HP. Sac State Green, no matter what, even if they fall to here, they fall to 1 and 2, right? They fall into the lower side of the uh, of the lead, or the standing. I will always have great respect for them for how well they have fought here in this series against one of the teams tied for first place. Honestly, so much respect. Joke's over. Missing close all the way around. Just looks to continue. Run it back, comes through from Slaw. Sent back immediately, though. Oh, that's so unfortunate. He checks the corner, but doesn't get the frag. So Darian wins that one out. And Kaizen going to be winning that on the other side. It means that we're now at a man advantage. Slaw is trying to sneak out. And does just that. Quiz falling down. Does he know that there could be another player here? Doesn't check the generator, but nobody's home. So, it's three on three here now. It's going to have to be another perfect retake if we want to see Sac State continue. Remember, the lockdown is available. This is going to be so good if they can find a good plant location. Uh, Spike is down, like you stated, but still, they have a huge ah. ultimate advantage. As Mercical finds Psycho now, two on three. A little bit dangerous here. A little bit of health advantage over as well as the open up back state. It's a little bit rough and Kaizen falling now. Darian, fast one alive, finds one. 30 HP in a dream right now. Time is oh. it's going to be a bit rough. Oh, good attack. They know where he is. He just runs in. Smurcicle. Going to find the last kill, and that is going to be UC Davis taking the series 2-0. 13, 9, 13, 11. I mean, listen, there is not not many more rounds you could have had there. Uh, pretty much making it as close as it could have been. By the way, Kaizen, uh, top it out. The average combat score tying up with uh, Smurf Sickles. So I mentioned both of those Killjoys a lot.
doing massive work with their utility, doing massive work with the frags. We saw the ace as well. The guys, I mean, oh, so much to talk about. But just both of those players picking up the pace, doing incredible work all the way around Orbital. And honestly, I don't, I don't know who I would even give an MVP to. I mean, it's so hard. <laughs> Across two games, we've had so many amazing players. And uh, again, this is why they're in champions, right? This is why this league is so much fun to watch. It's why you always can't count count someone out. And uh, I want to continue seeing this league unfold and just watch how they utilize some of these different strats, right? We saw uh, very different than your five Vandals that you normally see on any attacking round. We saw the Odin come out to great effect. We saw the Operator come out to great effect and even a little bit of a Spectre run in that main gun lineup. So uh, mm. both these squads plan to a T, uh, you know, big shout outs to um, Slaughter a little, falling a little bit in the leaderboard here. Uh, but in game number one, came out with a massive 26, 17 and five scoreline. Uh, but like you said, very, very difficult to pick a single MVP out. Uh, however, with that, that will be this series. Congratulations to UC Davis one for moving up to three and oh, Sac State Green. We'll have to start finding the way back at one and two. With that though, we will go uh, and give you guys a quick short intermission to go ahead grab any snacks that you would like as we have one more series after this you will want to tune in so thank you so much for tuning in for this match and continue hanging out What do you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head.
Hello and welcome back to the final series of the day. Week three is almost over. I am now joined by Jag, as we've said goodbye to Orbital Jag. How's it going, mate? You're ready to come back. I know you started out the day, and now you're coming back. Actually, unfortunately, I did not get to cast earlier today because of that first series that was so epic okay. and went on for uh, so long. We had to cancel the second game as we played off stream, but I am here now. Season 0 for NECC, and like you said, we're going to have a great match. It's going to be Boise State 2 versus California State University, Dominguez Hills, and neither of these teams are coming in with a perfect record. In fact, Boise State 2 hasn't even won a game so far, so they're going to be really needing to win this one to get back into this season. Yeah, and, and this is as, as well champions uh, division as well. So keep in mind that despite the fact that these, these two teams – not having the greatest of starts here, at least not in the first two weeks. That's okay. Still very strong rosters um, at the very least on paper and definitely been showing some good stuff uh, overall. That being said, I who are you thinking has the advantage here? Because honestly, I, I'm doing the math, the trigonometry, and I don't know if I can add it up, to be honest. I mean, I, I got to see Boise State 2 last week um, in that last game as well on the stream last time. And uh, they played it really close against Sacramento State 1 for a bit. They went to overtime on Icebox, and then they got to ascent that second map, and things did not go in their favor. I haven't had a chance to see Dominguez Hills yet, but from Coach Jim, I've heard very good things about them in the past, and there are some players I've actually recognized from some other tournaments, some Tier 2, Tier 1 mm -hmm. stuff, so I think that they might have some superior firepower, and I gotta say, uh, I, I think it, my my bet goes to them so far, but Boise State too. I mean, the fact that they have two different teams in the champions division, I believe, is very impressive. So the fact that you know they've got two teams that can play at the highest level, we'll see if they can bring it out here. But Dominguez Hills, they're gonna get my vote. Dominguez Hills, interesting. Honestly, I think I, I think that you've convinced me. I think that makes the most sense as we are into the agent select and up. That's a, a nice little bit of memory. I love the five Yorus. Uh, you know, before that, the five, the five Vipers as well. You love to see that uh, from the, the side of California State. But uh, nonetheless, we are getting into Ascent, our first map. And what are you expecting, Jack? Agent selection uh, can be a little bit interesting here, depending on how teams want to go. It can be indeed, and one thing I've been constantly saying is, please, just stop picking the Reyna. It's just, she's not nearly as good Thank as she used you. to be. I mean, she can still do pretty well, but her, her carry potential is so much lower, and Jabal did not heed my warning whatsoever. They are going to be going in with the Reyna, and uh, I, I think for the most part, there's a lot of staples here that you see on Ascent, which is going to be our first map. We already know our second map will be Haven, so we'll get to that eventually, but I, I mean, the Cypher, the Jet, um the sova they're all pretty much mainstays but we do have see a few differences uh, on the side of the mega sills they're gonna run the cypher versus a breach breach i believe this is the most popular map that he's played on usually and then the reina versus the phoenix both duelists that can self-heal and both can flash and stun but uh i gotta say i think phoenix is in a much better place right now in the meta than arena is yeah, I definitely think so. Well, that certainly came to be um, in our last matchup. Uh, the Phoenix is on Vine in particular, really showing strong for both sides in that matchup. So we'll see um, if Bay V can do the exact same thing here on Ascent. Um, all that, all that being said, I think. It's kind of interesting that we're seeing symbols pick up the breach. I, I like breach here. Uh, the thing about breach is it's all whether or not you can utilize that utility effectively. Otherwise, sometimes struggles. You know, not meant to set up yourself. Always going to be meant to set more on the uh, on the team side. And it's not always about just actually hitting the flash or hitting the damage. It's sometimes just about creating space and clearing out points. But if you're not doing either of those things, then your abilities are just going to be going to waste. But we're going to see what they can do here on A early on. Boise State walked up slowly, but now the push is there. Getting caught up with the cage and the uh, Cypher utility as well, but eventually able to break onto that side as the spike getting planted. Everybody just allowing for this to happen, though. With now the utility coming out, getting some information, the Owl Drone included in that as the first frag does go the way of Bay V. So California State looking good as they swing in to retake. Champ, another frag as that's the Sonar Dart to give information in every single kill going the way of California State as they retake. 
they retake, they get the flawless round, they get the DPs with plenty of time to spare, and now they're gonna be able to pick up some more ghosts and friendlies they've been left behind. I mean, it was a great initial approach by Boise State too, um, but they, they use all of their breach utility to get in. They use the flash immediately, and it does clear out the point, but then what do they have to hold it? They don't really have much in their pocket, unfortunately, and they split up, they don't hold the right angles, and there they do give it up, and as I'm looking at this buy right now it looks like surprisingly a, a bit of a buy from boise state too after losing i think we always talk about the possibility of a bonus round but a lot of these teams don't want to wait for it they want to go for it and they're going to go for it right now on b yeah it seems like there's some adjustments there often is the first drag going the way though of these attackers so maybe this worst by working out to their favor now getting aggressive the leer as well as the flashpoint going out on to b there's nobody home so same thing over at A. Nobody was there as now a one bad, bad dog swinging through that smoke, trying to pick something up, but that is not very effective. So the defenders coming back in here, doing work, and making this look a little bit easier. That being said, J Ball not wanting to get shut down quite yet. Trying to swing into three players is Bay V, but that is not going to work out in your favor most of the time. Riley, the sole player left, he's in a one on two, tries to swing out for the right weapon, but it's not got a lot of bullets in there. And so symbols closing thing out, things out, 12 HP left, Jag. Yeah, at that time they were able to do the exact same play. They just run in and they're able to get a pick right off the bat to really open things up for that attacking side from Boise State. Uh, I think the other thing is that you see the Reina, you know, she did survive a little bit longer than other heroes or other agents could in that potential situation. She still couldn't clutch it out, but it was really the gun not being there for Riley running out of bullets near the very end because both players alive for Boise State too were very weak, but that gambit paid off. The buy worked out for Boise State too and... Now they're going to go for pretty much a full buy here, except for symbols. Yeah, exactly. Fully invested into this round. So that definitely makes things a little bit dicier. If you uh, if you ask me, especially considering, you know, losing this round, you would be in a bit of an economic rut, though. Ball, that's a very nice start. AV goes down. And so a man advantage. Let's see what they try and do with it, Jag. Yeah, I mean, if you're the defenders, you already have to play super passive now, so you you can't put anyone down mid unless you want to make one site a little bit weaker, and you also don't have great guns. So I was surprised, honestly, that they just didn't play it aggressively and run into them down mid. I think that's a good thing to do when it's a save round. Um, but, I, I mean, it, it looks like right now um, they're just playing really passive on the attack, which is a bit surprising because they have superior firepower, and like you said, they have that person advantage, but... Right now, they are playing this as safe as possibly could be, and there's nothing wrong with that when you want to rotate well, but if you take too long, you might be running into a whole army. Yeah, well, that's two players at the very least, one around the edge of that dart cover, but it's just one frag in return and a very nice sonar dart pulled out makes that very, very difficult. Zeke, well placed. So it's just Riley left and a bit of deja vu, but this time not even close is it's going to be the Jet picking up the frag, and that's two to one. And I feel like Boise State, too, could have won that round a lot quicker. But I also respect that they didn't want to press um, too far. Because even when you don't have um, good guns, you can still win rounds. I mean, that's what being thrifty is all about in the Classic. You get a bit too close, able to hit its alternate fire to the head. And that's going to be almost a guaranteed insta-kill. But still, they get the job done. And now we're going to see the first full buy from both sides. And oh my goodness, is that an Odin coming online? Yes, it is. Oh... I do love to see me and Odin. That is unsurprisingly gonna be over there towards the B site, just trying to get a little bit of spam done. But nothing quite gained off the back of that just yet. It looks as if the attackers, they just wanna play this slow and steady, just like that last round. Don't wanna give anything away too early. And you know, that that usually is a pretty good decision on the map of Ascent. The default drag can be very strong. It can be, and I think they're it enabled them in the last round, but they still played a bit patiently after that. But here, um, they're still waiting for that initial pick, or maybe they're just trying to cause some noise. They, they haven't really done that. Um, they did get the ult orb on A, so that can kind of direct the defenders to say, oh, maybe they're going to be going towards A, but it's actually more of a mid approach. Um, I think the biggest thing is that Sylph has to be really careful because they have the spike mid, and if they're caught out, that could be very deadly for Zeke, but it looks like they will be able to rotate out of that. And again, just Boise State too, they're... 
they're waiting for that initial pick, but they're not going to find it just yet. Yeah, lots of passive play here from both sides, actually. The defense not really getting too aggressive. The most aggressive they've gotten is that Odin over towards B. But with that being said, it looks like the group up left. is finally yeah. happening. And mostly towards A. It looks like it should be an A split. Zeke getting some information with that sonar dart. It does get peaked, though. Which makes things hard. Curveball coming around the corner, but has AQ going to be able to pick up that frag. And now the double swing is good. So a second for the Jet. Doing big work, make it three. That's a big swing from one mad, mad dog. And unfortunately getting punished for it, leaving the Sova. One on four, the Odin in hand. Honestly, you might just want to get away with this weapon. It's so expensive. It's just going to be frustrating if you lose it. And this is what I expected from the beginning. I expected the Sova to have it, to Riley to have it. Usually you want to try to go for that sonar arrow and then see if there's anyone in B garage. But so they gave it to the Jet, which was a bit surprising. But now they give it back to Riley, who's... Now just trying to find an angle to find an exit pick, but it's not looking like it's going to happen anytime soon. And that's going to be another very strong round from the attackers. And one thing I remember last time is that chat was very, uh, very good at reminding us that the Jets player name on the side of Boise State 2 is Jaza K. I think we were saying Jazak last time. So oh. as a reminder, we, we remember chat. We remember. So they are doing very well right now at five and two. And that's going to be another round for Boise State after losing the initial one. Yeah, and, and that is a great adjustment, right? You, you wait, you play it slow. You get the information. Um, and fortunately, you were right. There was a big, uh, unfortunately, a big opportunity for Zeke to go down with that spike. But uh, didn't get punished for it. And so for that, the split worked out beautifully. And so another round on the board as... Look at the ultimates. A couple of them online right now for the attackers. So curious to see what, what they could do with it. Maybe also have to run it back. So that's definitely could be spicy depending on where the elect to throw it in. I mean, if you're Zeke, I, I think you use it as a way to recontest the spike after it's already been planted as a way to stop defuses from coming down. I think you could use the Rolling Thunder as a way to initiate a point or also the same way as a Hunter's Fury and use it to stop it. Uh, I think you hold the blaze storm for a while use it for when your economy isn't that great and you can use the empress as a way to clutch out um so there's there's a lot of different uh, plays here for boise state 2 a lot of different ways for those ultimates to be used um but they're just playing so passively i'm not sure we're going to see them come out anytime soon i think the rolling thunder would probably be the first thing that we'd see come out if anything does but do you really need to commit anything when you're already up in economy and they saved the odin last round for dominguez hills but Beyond that, they, they don't have a lot to work with right now. Well, you mentioned it, the Rolling Thunder. It does come out over onto A, but one player was there. That is going to be taken down, though, by Vigar. That's very well placed. Now, Symbols trying to do something with these flashes and the Aftershock, in fact, to push back any re-aggression paranoia as well. So, so much going into this one choke and oh, from the underneath, it would have picked up that frag, but swinging around the corner, so very strong. Two frags going the way of the defense, but that is short to lived because Gilman just winning out these gunfights and to follow it up, it is still two on one. In the Odin, though, do much of anything here. You're just going to have to figure out something great on the spray. One Dropping enemy. down. That's the first for Riley. Makes it a 1v1. That's beautiful. Riley with the pistol picking it up. And I think there should just be enough time, but it is awful close. It does get away with it. Less than a second left, Jag. That is a buzz of Peter to fuse right there. And unfortunately for Boise State 2, they played it just a bit too aggressively. I talked about how when you have that Hunter's Fury, you can just sit back, relax, go to the archway. You know where the spike is. You can have your teammates ping it. Instead, they are playing in hell. They try to go for different angles, looking at the drop from heaven, and neither of them were able to find any kills. And I, I think it looks like Gibaldo was just caught a little bit off guard. Um, because that was a Vandal versus a Classic. That's usually not a duel you lose, but there they did, and the defenders are able to take one back. They get guns, and now they've got some alts just like that. Run it back. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, not to mention, by the way, the uh, the fault line, you know, the, the main ability for, for the breach also knocks you off of, of the spike. So you don't even need that Rolling Thunder necessarily. There's lots of options, but speaking of which, that's a very nice headshot. The job Paul going to be picking up that frag and, well, solidifies the advantage 
operator in hand. Jaza K, a nice shot. And now it's Riley having to defend this fight against two. But Seek able to return that frag onto the opposing Sova. It puts Bay V in a tough situation. Already utilized that run it back as mentioned. So has to do it alone as he just gets, oh, just spotting out the one. Swings the corner, able to pick it up. Not gonna fake the TP, gets into the back, but it's just one HP, and AV winning that one out. What a 1v2 clutch. And what's most impressive about that is that it didn't have any curveballs going into that at all. They'd already used them previously, and somehow, some way, they're just able to get to, because I'm not sure what happened. They don't get the operator. So that is not the worst case scenario for Boise State 2. They didn't give up that gun, but that that's a round they really should have won it again. It's like these scenarios where they're up and they've got the numbers and yet still they're just not playing the right angles. They're not reacting fast enough. They're not playing far back enough. I mean, Boathouse is like the first place you're going to look when you're defending on B when you've already planned the spike. Where's the where's the second place? It's always going to be in that corner. And that's actually the first place they look that time. And either way, they're able to clear out sight and baby able to bring it back to even. Charles RK already going to be utilizing the, that blade storm early into this round of job hold. Trying to get aggressive. The curveball comes through. It's enough for Baby to pick up the frag. So man advantage already now for the defenses. This is starting out quite strong. You had that clutch in the last round, obviously, and uh, well, a much, much more solid win the round before. Somehow, though, still enough cash to pick out mostly guns here for the attack. Boise State 2 in, in a pretty good spot, all things considered, despite those losses. But now, they have to group up towards A and try to make something work over here. It looks like Symbol's looking to go in. There's the dash to engage with. Now, Bladestorm has to come up big, but it's Riley who comes up way bigger. Baby drives in her one as well as one mad, bad dog. And it is four to three. And this is exactly why I hate the Odin. It's just such a good gun the high rate of fire you don't need to be accurate with it you can just spray and pray a lot of the other guns like a vandal especially you can't really spray like you, you want to hit that one tap and if you don't then it goes all over the place of where the hitbox ends up being a uh, phantom you can spam a little bit but like the odin is just so deadly especially if you have it at range and from above every time riley is just going to be taking the exact same right. angle and besides that one paranoia from Vegar a little bit earlier that helped shut it down riley is just a force to be reckoned with right now and every time they're gonna go for the exact same play which basically stops boise state 2 from ever trying to enter on to b immediately so three rounds now in a row for california and it looks as if shan wants to change things up get aggressive over towards b and the hunter's fury riley picking up one with that and a couple of tags as well so pretty solid stuff getting lots of value out of that ultimate and now you're in a tough spot right three on four what do you do here you're stuck in mid you got the empress but you are stuck in mid so it's not a great location i think during the shot guards to create space and do some damage is a great idea so zeke is in a clear out catwalk for just a little bit but now they have been completely spotted out by that recon ball i think you try to send reyna on the flank with her empress that's really your only like big brain play that you can go for and it's gonna be boomer bust well right now it's looking bust because those frags are picking them up shan three to close out the round five to three now california state they are looking to just regain control late into this first half and they started off with the first round win which feels like forever ago now that we're getting to our ninth round but then they gave it up then they brought it back so there's a bit of a back and forth pendulum swing so far but i think now dominguez hills has really established themselves and they've gutted the economy for boise state too um i it looks like most of them will be able to buy, but instead of going for it, they're actually just going to do a save so that next round they can completely buy a team. And I really like that. And the question is, how do you play this? You still have three ultimates. So you still have utility. Do you just rush onto a point and try to get it over quickly, try to get as many exit frags as you can? Or do you still play this the same way you have, which is going for an early plant and then usually not being able to defend it? It looks as if right now the plan for Jibald is to just get aggressive okay maybe not looked like they wanted to walk through that that dark cover but 
that's not going to be doing that one. So it is just a spread out offense right now. The paranoia comes through, but it's just a little bit off. And nice taps. One, two, and three. One mad, mad dog picking up those frags in mid. And that is the danger, right? Whenever you have the uh, not ideal weapons, the sheriffs in hand, you can just get swung by a vandal as they do that. It's devastating. It's like it's a one tab battle, but the share of fire rate is so much worse that you're almost never going to win it. You are going to be able to take out Riley. So finally, that Odin is going to be offline, but it's a, a 1v4 and Jazaki currently is so weak. They're going to pick it up. They're going to try to see if they can find anything more and it's not going to be there that Odin is going to safely go back to Dominguez Hills and they have really started going on this defense. It, it seems like they needed a few warm up rounds to remind themselves of where they are and who they're playing, but now they have gone going but I, I think the most interesting thing we hear we see here is that both teams have bought operators and it's going to be the jet players which is what we expect but I, i'm really hoping we get some fadeaway shots here with the dash oh man those are the most fun aren't they as well there is seven ultimates available for this round counting both sides so we could be seeing a bit of chaos going back and forth all things considered first shot from that operator not working out very well but Jaza K does get aggressive. There's one player playing inside the dark cover that Omen was potentially able to swing through, but it's going to fall back as it's Shan who picks up the first frag with an operator there. Jafold getting just a little bit too aggressive over towards B, and the dry peak getting punished for that. So now, man, disadvantage as well. It's been a tough, tough spot, honestly, for Boise State, too, in the last couple of rounds. What can they do here? I think they got to be a little bit quicker on the draw of their ultimates. I mean, I'm looking at this Empress, and they've been holding it for forever, and they already have another Rolling Thunder. They had the Equalizer, but I mean, do they go for the point right now? Do they just run into B? The door isn't closed, or do they try to take the defender spawn side? And they see that that Hot Hand just came in, so they know that there's going to be someone on the flank, but they don't see Shan. Oh, I mean, you called it yourself. Just a little bit hesitant. Not quite ready to make those quick decisions. Now finally pushing on symbols does win out that fight against Riley, but it's still two on three and aggressive as Shan picking up the frag there with the knives. Not quite able to follow up, but the Bay V does just that with just a moment between the two. So seven to three now. This is a very nice half already. Already winning out the half at this point. Our California California State Dominguez Hills. Yeah, they've already won it, as you said, so no matter what, they will have at least a two-round lead. But, I mean, if they get two more rounds, they're going to be very close to getting the victory very early on after the swap. And, I mean, this is a defended-sided map, uh, so we'll, we'll see how they do on their attack. Maybe Boise C is able to turn things around then. But right now, I mean, their economy, again, not so great. They're going to try to save for the last round, it looks like, instead of trying to go for a full spend here and i'm not sure that's gonna be enough as already two kills are coming out for dominguez three i mean that's just beautiful the aftershock is there it's going to force out bay v but it is uh, at the cost of uh, a lot of lives and that is one frag very nice shot by the way the headshot in another flash that's the beauty of this breach the flash points on point but well the bullet hose is a little bit better you don't even have to see him to kill him it's just it's just like a sprinkler it goes everywhere it goes through the wall able to get a very spectacular wall bing there and although there were some great kills there from the sheriff it just wasn't enough for symbols to get their team where they needed to and it doesn't even really matter in the grand scheme of things besides helping their kd a bit because unfortunately this is the last time before the swap and there's still plenty of money to go around i mean look at riley right now when was the last time they bought they have full money for this round they could all by operators if they really wanted to which they won't but great gun advantage still have four ultimates so a lot of things going in their way actually four ultimates the other side only two on their side but still think a lot of things are going right for dominguez hills yeah and i think you hit the nail on the head there's a lot of hesitance with these ultimates um for boise state too there goes one of them finally getting thrown in it is going to tag down riley but it is not enough for anything but one frag. So it's just a one-for-one one trade. As Jaza K tries to get aggressive here, but it looks like one player is looking for that push, but oh, not able to find it. Gambara going down. Now the swing. Jaza K just swings out and finds frags. Baby finally 
shuts down that rampage, but it's still a one player disadvantage as now you've got to run back in here with not all that much time left considering now, oh, that was a massive frag needed to be found. And it's now 1v3, already found the first, has a paranoia in hand. So that's when it not hit anybody. And Jabold with the frag closes down the half eight to four. And I think there, if you're one mad bad dog, you really have to use that teleport um, when it's a 3v2, try to go into Boathouse, try to get some information about where they are on point, and then cancel it. Get out of there. Go back to where you were. It's just, it's great. It's great recon, and that's what you really need when you're down a person. But they don't do it. They don't commit it. And we finally see the Empress come out. I think that was the first time in 12 rounds we saw it come out, and look at the value it got. It got a lot of value for Boise State, too. So if they're a little bit quicker on hitting their ultimate instead of holding them, for a rainy day, I think they might give themselves a great chance going on to this defense. This is pistol round. Once again, it's a reset. We'll see if Boise State 2 can come back. They're only down by four. It's not uh, the best situation. It's not the worst either. They could be down quite a bit more, honestly. So we'll see what they can do now that sides are swapped. Yeah, I, I definitely get the feeling there. All things considered, not, not a terrible half. And, well, it's looking as if it's just a slow walk over towards b for california state as now they turn on the jets starting to pick up the pace and move over onto the site no real player here to defend with that one exception of zeke but that is they have been taken down very quickly indeed so 4v4 this retake is coming and I really want to see how the Cypher plays this. Cypher is notoriously not so great on attack when you're trying to get onto a site, but once you have it, once you've got the spike planted, they can be great to stop defenders from getting on there. They got the camera, they've got the trip wires, so we'll see how they do with this. But it looks like right now it's going a little bit better for the defenders. I mean, it's certainly a great opening though. Trades not so much one mad bad dog picking up two, but Chipold just right clicking away. There is symbols as well. So winning out those duels where it matters the very most. And so it's gonna be five for the Boise State two side. They have started to kind of bring things back now. And it can always start with just that one round, those two rounds near the end. Um it was one round to be exact, but now they've won two in a row. And it's just a little bit of momentum. I was talking about the pendulum swing before, how it went very much so in Dominguez Hill's favor for quite a bit. But now it's starting to go back to Boise State, too. They're, they still have a little ways to go, but they do have a good buy here. Um, I'm interested to see how this Marshall pick works out, because I've, I've seen a lot more teams commit to the Marshall now. It's a bit stronger and it's a bit cheaper, so it gives you a little long range damage it's not quite as accurate as the opera not quite as powerful but it can still get kills that are one tapped yeah i haven't seen a ton of really effective martial play and i'm, I'm hoping that that increases as more people pick up the weapon because it's certainly a lot of fun to watch as it looks like that a push very much is in and the fourth five from both sides as well so one bad bag dog does find that first frag the attackers Looking strong here as they have fully taken the site, but due to the smoke, Big R picks up a big frag as well. So now it makes things a little bit more difficult as they just get ready. They prompt to go in, but that sonar dart, that arrow so impactful as the flash, the flashpoint was there. But now they know where two of these last three players are, but they don't win the gunfights. Oh no, Boise State 2 fall. And do you know what we finally saw for what feels like the first time in the series? One mad bad dog playing at the archway. So they, they do have two in hell. And again, I'm not a huge fan of two players taking the exact same angle, but they have someone coming on the rotation from the backside. No one is expecting that on the side of Boise State too. And although Riley, uh, not Riley, although I believe it was Zeke does their best there at the very end. Can't get the job done, not looking behind them. And it's going to be Dominguez Hills getting closer and closer to that victory. Also, have a pretty good buy. Uh, not a full buy by any means, but a lot of Spectres on their side. And they only need four more rounds to close this out. Well, and it looks like Boise State, too, they have conceded the economic territory where before uh, California State, they elected to force buy-in. They had a couple more rounds to work with, obviously, as well. But certainly going to be going into that decision. But 
They are back onto the eco, the pistols only for Boise State. Though those pistols can't be effective. Javal showing exactly why that is. As the rest of the push comes on. Hey, it is just trades though. All things considered, this is looking very strong. In fact, the man advantage now is Jazak Q picks up that frag. So this is very good for the defense. Yeah, Jazak able to pick up a Spectre. Zeke now has a Singer. So a lot of guns going their way. And they're both looking up at heaven but now they know that there's at least one person at tree but not this they're just not turning around this could be very bad for them as they're about to be run up on oh no baby so committed riley riley with the triple spray down saving the round for california state i mean honestly i thought it was over baby just not looking the right direction but that was a great clutch from riley Unfortunately, they could not save the Phantom that Bavy had. So the best gun that was on the field is going to be in no one's hands. That's enough for some to buy a little bit more. But they're still going to have a uh, priority here with the guns. Uh, Riley is going to stay with that Spectre. But uh, one thing I'm really interested to see is how Jaws K plays on this operator. It's going to be the first one we're going to see from either teams after the swap. And now that they're on the defense, um, it gives them great uh, opportunity to just take advantage of angles and set up a bit earlier. Looks like Shan is just a bit of a connoisseur of this Odin. Picking it up, obviously, you know, we've seen that from Riley, but Jazak K, that's a way to shut down that Odin before it can do much of anything. Taking it out before it can start going as Shan falls and another to follow. Bay V going down as both of the duelists available for the attack have fallen. And that was, I was, what was I just talking about? It was talking about the operator. It was talking about Jaws K. When you're a jet and you have the option to sit up before the attackers, you know, just take the angles that you want. This map is basically your playground. But when you have to rotate, that's when things can get a bit more suspicious. Uh, and now they know that's going to be right around the corner. Certainly do. There is one, one frag fought back. One mad bad dog. He's there, available, but missing the shots. Javald winning that out. Now the operator picks up the spot on the Gonbara. Is now two on four. Like, what even can you do here? Zeke swings out, wins that duel with ease. Now, should be one for the Cypher, but not much more, especially not with that Sonar dart thrown inside the dark cover. A little bit unfortunate there, as it's the first round picked up after what was a couple in a row for California State. I think the problem is that they had the wrong players at the wrong position. So I think one mad bad dog had to be the one on point and you needed Riley to be the one in the back. Um, obviously, when it's a 1v3, the Hunter's Fury is going off. That's kind of just telling everyone where you are. So that might have not been the best way to try to do it as a way to contest the spike defuse. But that's your best play there. So one mad bad dog, if they could stay alive, if they can be hiding long enough, use the Hunter's Fury. You save it for this round instead. They've got four ultimates versus four ultimates on the other side. So lots of ultimates all around. But Domingus Hill don't have a lot of money to spend. And that's coming out with the fact that they have mostly singers. Yeah, mostly singers. A lot of aggression. Hitting up onto B. First frag and Jabal chiming in as well. It's looking like all the frags go in the defense's way. Marring just the one and Riley spraying it wildly. Trying to find Zeke as he picks up a triple kill to close out the round and narrow this scoreline. I felt like at that point, Riley was just like, all right, come kill me. I give up. I, I don't know what they were shooting at there. I'm not exactly sure what the plan was, but I mean, no Oops. harm, no foul. It's uh, it's not a, it's not a lot of money they gave up there for the frenzy. And now they're going to have the Odin once again, which is their favorite gun that's been made pretty clear. And I mean, the Odin versus the operator, Jazakay now starting to come alive, come online. And I'm going to take Jazakay, I'm going to say, in that duel, if it does happen. I mean, listen, that's the way the history looks. Jazakay winning, of course, that one-on-one -on -one duel. But yeah, 10 ultimates, by the way. Not a single person doesn't have their ult up here. So I think we could see some craziness. Where do you think that they should put these towards on the attack? I think, oh, I mean, you don't want to take that duel. So already that kind of changes the plan because now you're down one. Um, I think you make it a lot of noise once, like one uh, place, and then you use the omen teleport, but use it as a bait. So you don't actually teleport anywhere. You just use it to get the noise and everyone knows it. And then you go on to the same point that you were originally making um, mm -hmm. sound at. 
and that's just a big brain strat that i think of but i don't know if there's enough time i'm not exactly sure what their plan is i mean they bought here and if Dominguez Hills loses this, they're almost guaranteed to lose the next round as well. And then get closer and closer. So there's a little bit of separation from them as they have not had nearly as much success on attack since the swap. And as you said, things are getting closer and closer for them. So they got to make a move eventually. Well, and much like on, on Boise State's attack, it, it feels like they aren't quite sure where to use these ultimates necessarily. I like, I like the idea of, of throwing in a, a nice little fake, but... We haven't quite seen that just yet. It looks as if it's going to be a B hit. Most of the players here for the defense have already gotten out of there. And in fact, all of them have. The dark cover is going to be cutting them off as AV trying to get aggressive. The curveball comes through. Does wind up one. Can he get out though? 24 health is able to get away. Now the running back is online as well as now. A, five, a four on four rather for this retake. And I'm surprised they don't use the running back immediately. It's going to give them 100 health, but they're kind of caught out right now between a rock and a hard place market, as well as defenders. While the Emperor's going to come in, but three are going to get paranoid, but still a four on four. That's great utility usage initially, just stalling out this push as long as possible. Now it comes through. Two players moving towards the site. One still with the operator in market, but it's not going to be quite enough as the frag's not really going the way of the defense. In fact, none of them, with the exception of Symbols finding one, and Jaza K does pick up one on two on the exit, but that is still a round victory in the hands of the attackers. California State, they have put themselves back on the map after just a two-round deficit. That was a round they had to win. They did win it, unfortunately, because so many of them died. Their economies are still not great. So I'm wondering how they're going to go for this buy, if they're going to go for the Bulldog and Full Shields or go for a Vandal or Phantom and Light Shields. And it seems like my question has been answered is most of them are going for the Light Shields. And if you get into a spam matchup, that can be the difference maker. 25 extra health or 25 extra health protected. That can be the difference between life or death. But most importantly, uh, Riley has the odin and jazake has the operator I, I think those are the biggest takeaways after that last round well and unfortunately the defense relegated to two guardians as well that definitely makes things a little bit more difficult and so now well i was gonna say shan has that blade storm already picking up a frag just bold going down as now that run it back utilized we thought we would see it in the last round now it's used to create a lot of space over here towards the gardens. Getting aggressive does get sent back, though. That does allow for Shan to comfortably walk up into this position and hold off rotates before they're even able to come through. Zeke falls to that hold, and Kambara with one as well. This is looking devastating now for the defense as they just got two players left. And this neural theft is actually going to be huge because they find out exactly where the operator is. So that's going to be, oh, we'll say that might be a good take out of their hand. Oh, it is not just yet. A bit of a misplay there by Shan, but Bayvi is there to clean it up. That's going to be the operator going into their hands. And what a perfect time to get it. This is the last round they need to secure this first map. Yeah, exactly. You know, pretty much perfectly played there. You like to see the, uh, the space created right by that run it back to basically allow for Shan to easily walk up there without any danger um, and potentially find another frack as it's well. It's all recon there. I mean, you use the run it back and you, you lose it, but y you yeah. know there's someone on the stairs, um, but they turn around. If it was symbols, they turn around, so they're able to get the person that was to the left. And, uh, oh, that's going to be Jaws K falling, so that Ooh. operator battle happened really quickly, and already it's going to be offline for Boise State. I mean, Shen stepping things up big time here in the last few rounds. That already found the first in this, what could be the last round when Mad Bad Dog as well. When that kill onto Zeke and blinded up is the player on B site. So Bay V winning things out in his desperation mode. Just two left alive here for the defense. Hunter's Fury coming out. Doesn't hit anyone just yet. They do know where they are, though, and it is going to be the final blow as Bay V and Riley get kills back to back. And it was close for a little bit, but at the end of the day, it looks like Dominguez Hills just pulled out all the stops and were able to persevere. And get, I mean, a six round differential, again, it's not the biggest win in the books, but it's still pretty clean at the end of the It's just overall just pretty clean. I mean, it certainly is. And. Um, when you think about the the way in which they, they won it, there was quite a few rounds that just kind of 
looked flashy from their perspective. We weren't necessarily seeing that same sort of a flashiness, right, from the Boise State side. And, you know, that's not everything. I, I'm, I'm saying that to mean that oftentimes when California State were making the big plays, they were making the huge plays. And I think also they had some very big like players step up. I mean, you look at the leaderboard and four out of five of the top fraggers are mm-hmm. from California State. But Riley in particular is really impressive. Sova usually not a character that gets too aggressive, but they really shine on that Odin. But there were some plays uh, other than just the Odin that were really great. And I think I think there were like two one v twos that they won back to back. So there's two rounds. You know, if they hadn't been given up by Boise State when they had that person advantage. This could have been a much closer map, could have been 9-11, and we could still be continuing it here. But you, you lose the ones you should win, and unfortunately, you don't get any go-agains. There are no reversals of fortune there, and I think we're, I think they really need to shut down Riley going forward. Yeah, they certainly need to make those adjustments, and we're going to give them some time to try and make some adjustments before we move into the map, the second map of Haven. So for that, we're going to go to a short little intermission whilst they do that, and we'll be right back with you to finish out this series potentially right after this. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head.
What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. Alrighty, everybody, welcome back. So apologies for the bit of an extended pause, but we have returned. We're getting ready to go into Haven and, of course, California State. They're up 1-0 in this series, Jag. What adjustments do you think Boise State 2 can make to try and bring us to a map 3? Well, I'm glad you asked that, Vincent, because you and I were talking about this during that extended break, and one thing we both agreed on was the, the Reina pick. Uh, it just wasn't, unfortunately, getting the value that Boise State 2 was looking for. And there were some frag outs there, here and there, but it's it's not enough. When you've got a character like that that's so feast or famine, you made a great point. They really need to be in the top three, not only of their team, but I, I would say overall in the lobby to really like say, like, all right, this was a good pick. And unfortunately, for Boise State 2, their arena was only at seventh overall in the lobby. Third on their team, so that's a big part of why they were not able to get the win there. They weren't able to secure kills and... Another thing was that they weren't able to finish rounds where they were up early on. There are a lot of 1v2s that they ended up losing, and I think that's the biggest thing. They just need to like finish strong. They need to make sure that they're getting that last kill. They need to be taking different angles, or at least if they're going to take the same angle, immediately you've got to go for that trade. It's got to be the one for one because you've got one body to give. They do not, so if you're able to get that kill immediately after your teammate dies, then you win. All is good, and again, it would have been a lot, a lot closer if they'd been able to get some of those rounds back, but they didn't, and they lost 13-7. to seven. Yeah, and, and you know, all things considered, a, a relatively slim margin, you know, not a not a bad map by any means for Boise State. They, you know, they did struggle with some other things as well. I think we both mentioned ultimate usage um, was definitely a struggle for them. They didn't necessarily appear to have a full plan in place when trying to throw out those ultimates, particularly on the attack. Um, and on the defense, it seemed more reactionary than anything. So that could be another potential uh, adjustment as well. But despite what we have said, it looks as if Jabald might be going for Arena once again. We should be on the lookout for potentially Jabald to step things up here. Yeah, and it looks like so far, Boise State, they haven't changed up anything. This is the exact same comp they just ran. And um, 
again, I'm wondering how the breach plays into this because I feel like there is some great plays from symbols, and then there are some uh, not so great ability usages here and there. The Rolling Thunder didn't really find value. I feel like whenever it was used, but they will try to do it. Uh, but on the other side, we might see zero going on the Reina, so we are going to see the Reina the Reina mashup, and we're not going to see a jet come out from them. So that's very very interesting. We're going to see how that plays out. And I gotta say, I, I think I actually do like Boise State's comp just a little bit more going into this. Well, and you know what's odd about the lack of a jet, right, is Haven, right? It's so operator-centric, or at least it mm -hmm. can be. And the jet obviously has such great abilities that, that are just that work well with that operator and and the fact that we don't see the jet here definitely seems a little bit odd that being said on the other side zero going with the reina i think it's good for the reina duel actually helps them out but going against just about anything else that that does make things a little bit more dicey and riley now on a sova the amount of utility available for the attackers right now is incredible, especially in comparison to what we see for the defense. Yeah, for a second, Riley looks like they were going to the sky, but it was just a bait. They go back to the Soba that they top fragged on last time, mostly in part because of their Odin play. Uh, I think what you brought up was a very good point, though. I mean, Jet's usually your operator player. Um, they won't have to worry about that as much on the attack right now for Dominguez Hills for a little bit, but I mean, if you don't have a jet, usually it's the uh, it's a raise because she has the blast packs that help her get in and out of fights if need be, but there's no one that really has that ability on the side of Dominguez Hills except for maybe Zero. If they're able to get someone on the ground, they get the soul orb and then they're invulnerable and they kind of wraith away, but that, that means you have to get the first kill as opposed to like missing a shot and then getting out um, with one of those abilities. Yeah, exactly. It makes it a little bit more difficult. So, information gained off the back of that camera. The cage has come out, but the push is in, and the frag as well. Good. Zeke falling down here on the defense of the A site is Baby. Gets into a prime position, curveball prepped and ready. Swing is there, but gets taped in the head for the trouble. And so the hot hands has to come out in response. But they know exactly where Bay V is sitting. Gets blinded up through, but they've forgotten about him. It doesn't matter the swing. Good with zero. Keeps doing massive work on the Reina with these frags. We talked about it at, well, a lot as we come in. That posing Reina now picking up the frag. It is... 1v3, the first of that already dispatched. Three bullets, now two! Not quite enough as Riley cleans up the round. Cleans up the round, and it was really a battle between Zero and Jabal, and you kept talking about how big that would be, you know, when they go face-to-face. -face. It was Jabal who comes out on top of that duel at least that time around, but Zero does enough damage to get the win, and that was just a great play there by Bay V. Uh, I mean, they basically bait everyone to look at them. They know exactly where they are in the corner because of the hot hand. It's got a little bit of an area of effect, so you can see it sometimes through walls a little bit. There, uh, they just they just peek the wrong way. Then they did turn around on zero, but it was a bit too late. And now we're going to see. I, I think this is a good play from Boise State. We've seen some four spies after losing the first round, but they're actually going to go all classics. And Riley not going to be on the Guardian, so definitely not afraid to bring out some of the less meta guns here. It it's refreshing, man, to, to see the, the classic in the second round. You know, not something we necessarily always see, but the the confidence to just go for the, the low purchase, no real need to force buy in. And we are seeing a very, very slow round here for the attackers. They just want to bait out any sort of aggression uh, on, on the defensive side. And right now, there is some aggression, as in Zeke pushing over at A, but otherwise, it's been very slow with just about a minute left now in the round it is very slow for the attackers which again which is a bit surprising because we've seen that sometimes the attackers have had the advantage they have the better gun buy and yet they still play it very passively i mean the one thing is they have gotten some damage on the side of boise State right now they've got two players that are weak and now they're gonna get the first kill so that default pick has finally come through and we're gonna see where they push through and it looks like it could be mid or it could be to c First, got to dispatch Jabald, who is looking to get aggressive over long. Now that mid push comes in that you were talking about, or more aptly in through the garage. A little bit of attack onto Gumbara, but oh, very nice. That's one two for one. It's finally, it's been traded out by Bay V. It's still two frags, though. All things considered, with five classics, this is not too shabby. 
as the Cypher has been tagged down significantly, and it's probably just a matter of time before he gets taken out. Yeah, I mean, there's there isn't much you can do right now if you're Zeke, unfortunately. Uh, they know exactly where you are. You don't have long distance that can compete with a Guardian or even a Spectre of the Classic, so it doesn't really make sense to save here, but at the same time, it also makes sense to not give away more credits, more alt charge to the opponent. So if you can somehow get a frag here on the exit, but instead you're going to be running in right into the Guardian, or the Spectre, actually, and there was, I, I think they just had to turn the corner. They had to check your corners. Always got to check your corners, and unfortunately, don't do it there. But even if they did, I'm not sure that's a matchup that they win. Yeah, and of course, had to go for that, right? Because of the fact that you know, you only get a thousand credits if you survive. Um, makes things a little bit more difficult. With just the classic in hand, that's not ideal, is it, Jag? No, I, I think you bring up a great point. You actually get, I think, more credits if you do die. Um, so at that point, you might as well just throw yourself in. Maybe you get a kill on the way out. You force the other team to buy a little bit more, and things go well. At that time, you, you don't get you don't get it all, but you do get something, and now you get the full buy for your team. Yeah, exactly. Full buy in. Three Vandals, two Phantoms against the bonusing weaponry of California State. They have pretty much nothing that's ideal, I want to be honest. The Guardian, uh, a couple or a couple of Spectres, a couple of Stingers. Uh, it's a, a bit of everything to throw at the enemies this round. The Spike has been left in a prime position. Just going to be getting aggressive over towards B. It's one mad bad dog. And this has been slow, steady here. Just about a minute left. Nothing really happening. It's just some pushing on the extremities. And it's interesting because this is like the exact same as last round, but now they are at a disadvantage. This is what I would expect after they know that this is a bonus for the defenders. And now that they lost the first pick, they lost Riley, they might have to change up their game plan. But I mean, I think there's two ways to play this. If you know you've got the worse guns or the lesser guns going into this, either you just run in, or you, you just play it slow and steady and you try not to lose the first gunfight. Unfortunately, they do. And now you really can't play slow and steady because there's only 30 seconds left. Well, slow and steady. The run it back utilized there on the offense. But unfortunately, over at A, there is just nobody winning standing. any gunfights. And that as well, not working out. The run it back utilized, but nothing gained off the back of it. And Jabald with a 3K. Proc's a flawless round now for Boise State, too. I think, yeah. So going back to what I said, I think the, the best plan there is just run it down in mid, try to plan it on B, get some extra money, maybe get an alt orb or two, or, you know, at least charge from the spike plant, because there's no way you're winning that round at long distance. They try to take C and A, both that have great sidelines for the defenders, and neither neither option was a great one. So unfortunately, they take... Uh, take a few L's there, take a few deaths for the first time, but now they can go for the full buy, and again, this is going to be the first time we do see both teams full buying, but Ultra Ball can open things up early. Yeah, very nice frag as well. Well, make it two. That's beautiful. So we talked about the Reyna. This is the Reyna popping off, playing very well in the early stages of this map. One bad, bad dog does kill Zeke over towards A. That was the sole defender over in that direction. He got a little bit too aggressive on short. As now Rambara just trying to take an engagement here at B, but he's just going to hold the rotations for a little bit longer. Solely the jet is available at A as the rest of his team, I'll say the rest, the two other players <laughs> uh, push over towards A, but this is this is where it gets a little bit difficult. You have to try and do something with that push over towards A. Gambara not going to win that duel on the flank. And, oh my goodness. That's just a great frag you love to see. That being said, we spoke about the Reynas. The Reynas are doing work right now. And Zero pops the Empress. Low HP though. Needs to find the first frag without losing too much health. Just 18. Now the drop comes in and not ready for it. So symbols winning out that gunfight. It's tied back up. And there there was a solo orb on the ground for zero. They just weren't able to pick it up because they are being pressured out by symbols. So they kind of run back, try to play under hell a little bit, try to go for the spike plant, but unfortunately wasn't able to get the job done. And we talked about the Reyna being useful and how Jabal's had to be in the top three. They're currently number one and it's it's a bit close now zero popping off near the end but for a while that they're ahead by uh four kills 
from everyone in the lobby. So we'll see if they can keep that up. And also on their team, Jessica going to have the operator again. And we saw how deadly they were last round or last map. Certainly were, but here's where it gets dangerous. The pace change can really catch out an operator player. The first of those shots not working out. That's going to be the paranoia coming through. Jazak Cave gets hit by that, but it's not quite enough. The counter utility perfection. And Zeke That's an ace. up, knocks oh, nice. them oh. down. The quad kill to close it out. I got too excited. You know, I saw the numbers in the top hand right hand corner and I was like, oh, finally seen it, but unfortunately. Thought a little bit, uh, not enough there, I'd say. Didn't think enough before I said that, but still a great play by Zeke nonetheless. Now we're going to get a little bit closer to Bald, who didn't actually get a kill there, but this is a play I wanted to see from Dominguez Hills a bit earlier. Um, I think on like the second round, or the, no, the third round to be exact. I wanted to see them go for that exact play when there wasn't an operator online, but Jaws okay. Going to be playing in a Heaven or on C Long almost every time where they have the best sight lines. Yeah, it certainly is. For this time, though, over towards B, at least for the time being, playing up on top, trying to find something. But that spray not working out in Jabal's favor. Bay V winning that one out. So makes things a little bit more difficult, especially that big fragger that we were just discussing going down early. So that man advantage, what do you do with it? How do you proceed, Jag? I think right now they're playing this really smart is that they didn't actually just immediately run into a point after getting one kill. They're playing for map control. They need to make sure that Zero stays alive here. But they're, they're just playing all angles. They're playing all points. I think they're trying to find someone who's trying to rotate all the way around. You know, defender taking a very aggressive flank, trying to find someone out. Haven't been able to do so just yet. And since you now know that that operator is going to be on A, uh, if you can get this trade, what you do, now you just run all the way into A. Yeah, I that, that exactly definitely queuing up all of the pushes. The neural theft coming out for the offense gives them a good idea of where the entirety of the defense is rotating in from. Knows that they're coming all from the defender spawn position. So now a pretty great place to be, especially if Bayvi is able to make this rotation happen. The quick flank, easy does it. One frag already going the way of the offense. And while well, trying to back up a little bit, but Bayvi was there and closing it out is the Cypher. So a great response after a couple of rounds not going their way. California State are back in control. This is exactly what happened on the last map, where at first they built up a small lead, then they gave it up, and then they battled their way back to having a pretty big lead before halftime swaps. And we're, we're quite a ways away. We're still six more rounds away before we get there, but this is where you start building things up. Jazuke does have enough money to buy another op, and the whole team can buy, but we saw Riley, how much they popped off last time with this Odin. It's now back in their hands, and I feel like as long as they avoid the Operator, as long as they avoid Jazuke early on and they don't give up that initial pick, they've got a lot of great ways to enter points. They certainly do. There's a lot of options available, right, to engage with here. Um, not not anything to, to sniff at is the running back. Speaking of which, running it back over towards C. That information gain, he's going to find one. That's beautiful. And Riley with the Hunter's Fury as well elsewhere. Takes down Javald. So another big frag on and done and dusted. As it's two on five, a devastating push over towards the C side jack. It's devastating. And there are ultimates on the side of Boise State, but one of them you got to get a kill for, and so far no one has fallen on the side of Dominguez Hills, and the other one is the Blade Storm. but you run in with that, you could give up the Operator, I, I think honestly, oh, okay, now you get an entry pick, so now you can use it, which they will, it is still a bit risky, honestly, I'm surprised they haven't just thrown the Operator over the side, so it's not given back, but they want to take this, even though it's a 4v2, and now it's a 4v1. I mean, that's just, you just don't get into that spam duel with Riley, come on now. Riley's going to win that most of the time, and Jazak K, despite getting tagged by the sonar dart, does pick up that frag, but all things considered, it's just two. And with the neural theft in invested plus an additional weapon, I don't know if that's really worth it, all things considered. Chet, what is your take? I, I agree with you. I, I don't think it's worth it. I think that if they've been able to find a kill immediately off the neural theft um, and then make it a 2v3, then it's much more worth it. And then I think that you just go for the blade storm because you run in with aggression. It's kind of that swap of, you know, I'm playing long distance and now all of a sudden I'm in your face and that's going to catch players off guard. I mean, we've seen how tempo can throw off operator players themselves. So if you're the one switching up the tempo, it's kind of in your control there. But as soon as as Cypher died, and as soon as they didn't get a pick, immediately, I, I kind of assumed that was going to be it, and Riley just going to be doing Riley things, spamming away into Garage and breaking both doors. 
and getting a tag on the Chaz K. Oh, that's got to be frustrating. It's not too bad, but still a, a difficult tag early on into this round. But Chaz K is not at all flustered by it. Going to be committing regardless to the angle. Now has to fall back due to the Owl drone. The information gained, of course, is now everybody is still spread out across the map. It looks as if we're pushing over towards A, though. At least the attackers are. So just about a minute left here in the round. This is important because the economy can turn so, it's so incredibly. If, depending on who wins this round and now that push incoming the utility the counter utility is in nobody on the site itself right now and so these smokes the dark cover able to allow some space to get that spike planted down rolling thunder coming in jazzy k gonna open it up with a kill on to riley but it's gonna be trades upon trades it's gonna be a 3v2 and all is said than done and you don't just drop into zero like that but you also don't want to be facing jazzy k jazzy k can they get the 4k the omen is so weak they know exactly where the spike is they're gonna go for the bait they only have one shot so they go for the classic and said they still have the blade storm at their disposal and again the bait just gonna try to get them to peek but this is very smart from one mad bad dog they have not peeked the corner just yet they only show up for a second and time is running out oh not enough not enough jaza k trying to be the hero of that round but it wasn't there and now i mean five to three you said it before, there was, you know, a time, a moment back on Ascent where it looked very, very close for Boise State. And then we saw California State just reconsider. They stepped back in and basically were dominant, right? And, and I think we might be seeing that here once more. Yeah, and that was a big round because that was going to be the... It's going to be the last time for a little bit that they can both fall by. And then the Operator also goes to the Attacker. So Riley actually going to go off the Odin to the Operator, which I think is a bit of a risk because those are two very different guns. But, oh no, one mad, bad dog going to fall there. So it's, a, it's an even trade. But, I mean, when you're, when you're running against Singers, that's going to be a trade you'll take any day. Right here. Well, and Riley said, listen, Standing there ahead. might be question marks about whether or not I as the so should use this weapon. But I definitely will get the frags with it as it is going to be the man advantage once again here for the attackers as well as the weapon advantage to be fair and oh zero found out not only the camera but zeke taken out is now the a site is wide open for business once more and in a two on four what realistically can we see from these two defenders i mean i think if you're vagar just just keep your phantom um it's the, it's the only good gun that you really got the specter from symbols isn't the biggest loss and they're about to be running right in to this vandal any second there it is yeah th that's just not going to work they're going to be able to cover all angles because they have so many people so your vagar just, just run away it it's not worth it it's or not it's actually not vagar now it's symbols so you actually do lose the best gun on the field so um maybe not for symbols you just run in because you do have full armor but you could just try to save it so you don't have to buy that next round I i'm not sure i think either way you're going to be facing a lot of enemies very soon because they're probably going to realize you're not approaching them so they're going to try to track you down well, look at where uh, I thought Cypher was actually in mid. My apologies. I, I got scared there for just a moment. I thought Cypher might be on the flank. No, not to be. Simple should ideally get out with this. Yeah, oh, no, no need close. to be taking that fight. Oh, like you said, though, and especially the fact that you don't get as much cash as well makes it um, imperative that you, that you don't lose that weapon there after that round. And so all of that being said, we are into a interesting position it is six to three and there's three rounds left in this half it's interesting indeed this is this is the round that they really need to win on the side of boise state too to be able to get into a position where maybe they can tie things up going into the half they do have an operator online once again so jazza k has to win the duel or at least get that opening frag immediately looks like they're playing on b where i, I feel like they've actually had the least success i feel like they've been most successful on a but they decided to leave the cypher there instead. There's going to be the first shot, but I think that was from Riley all the way on C long, and they left the spike behind. I, I really like that play. Again, they're just playing for default on the side of the attackers, and that way no one who dies early is going to have the main um, point of what you're playing for out of position for them. In all fairness to Charles K, 
they really haven't been playing mid, giving them any types of opportunity to kill people with the operator. That being said, though, Riley does have an opportunity and takes it. Taking down Jabal, another big fragger like we were talking about, Bayvi has done a great job of getting themselves into the, well, into the in position. And oh my goodness, Zero. This is a fake, by the way. This is all a fake. Oh, cool. and, it doesn't matter. It's just a fake. And they have gotten all the way onto C with it. Hook, line, and sinker. That was an incredible push coming through from California State. I really wish we had a replay of that because that was that was the collateral kill right there. That was three kills and what you called it perfectly. That was a fake. Zero was the only one on A and someone was able to get three kills there. That is, I mean, that's the potential of Reyna. She doesn't have as much of that usually in those big fights. I feel like especially if there are already players from Boise State actually on the point, you saw that they were trying to re-enter onto A, which I think was a bit of a miss you there, unfortunately, but uh it's that's gonna be the lead guaranteed to Dominguez Hills. We've already seen the situation where they ended up going, I believe it was 9-3 when all things were said and done, and they could they, be at that exact same score. It was actually 8-4, if I'm being correct. Yes, yeah. That's correct. And um honestly, I'm still I'm still flabbergasted that it got three on the on that one. But we are into the next round, and it is a one-for-one -one trade over towards the, the garden, the, the grass area. Riley does find Jaza Q, but symbols back for more over towards long does pay for it with the most of their life 80 p left on that player as well it's looking as if it should potentially be an a hit at least by the setup but with a minute left honestly wouldn't be surprised to see california state just wait this out see what they do uh, i mean c is completely open right now or at least it was for a second it looks like that breach is roaming in garage but that is the most open point. And that's where the Omen is looking right now. But the spike is actually going to be in Riley's hands. And that's a great aggressive rotation. Now the spike is down. And for the first time, what feels like forever, Dominguez Hills running themselves at a disadvantage. Well, that disadvantage <laughs> short-lived. Cast or curse. Yeah, left. for just a moment. Uh, though that being said, it's still the spike in a very, very tough spot. The guard still on defense swinging in though is zero and able to dismiss away that again the power of the reina in the 1v1s and now it's going to be onto one mad bad dog potentially on the rotate but no left. it looks as if the breach moving the other way but with just 8 hp what can symbols even do here yeah i mean nothing they don't have rolling thunder um it, that and that pretty much makes it impossible um at this point you're just trying to flash someone and immediately get the headshot, but you're going to be running into two different angles that's being covered, and you don't turn around, you don't check your corners, and yeah, if they had if they had a full health pool, that could have been a very different story, but that was that was just, you know, you, you go for the play, and unfortunately, it does not work out in your favor. There isn't much else that can be said about that, and it, luckily for you, at least, it doesn't reset your economy too badly, as you can still buy, but... There are some players on your team that are going to have to go for a bit of a light by Zeke in particular, who has actually now become the top fragger just by one. He's going to have to go for the Bulldog. Yeah, and, and in general, we are seeing some huge step ups, particularly on, on the side of California State. We see, we see Zero having a great game right now. Um, Riley as well was, uh, was up there, but Jabal trying to uh, say, listen, not the only rated player on the field. I'm here too, and I will get these tracks. Fix up the first. Giving him an advantage. Now over to the defense. Something we've not yet seen for Boise State in the last couple. Definitely could give them a great opportunity as they are, are trying to rotate effectively towards this A site. Because that is where the spike is headed. The information, I presume, gained by a camera. Didn't quite see it, but this is, once again, one mad bad dog playing the flank, doing it perfectly, and now getting onto the site with the rest of the team. It's still 3v3, three, 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 though, so all things considered, not really that big a deal, as the defense certainly could find it, but oh, what a shot! Through the dark cover, through the wall, headshot straight into the site for Snoggin. Is now the spike able to get planted down, and there's two players sitting around the corner. That owl drone 
spots for both of them as well as getting the tax. And Hunter Shuri comes in. The first already down. Jaws IQ though, getting aggressive. That's a bit of a problem. Now tag down low though. Riley pushes in. Easy does it and closes it out. It is nine to three. So they improve their first half scoreline to California State. They do indeed. It's only one extra round, but it's also one run that puts you even closer to finishing out this series very strongly. If they could run the gambit and get four more in a row, that's going to be a very nice scoreline going in to bedtime, which I don't know if they're going to be going to bedtime yet on the West Coast, but here on the East Coast, I know I'm starting to feel a bit tired, but I mean, this, you can't if you're Domingo Sales. You've got to keep this energy going. You've got to keep it running through. We talked about how the lead did kind of fluctuate at one point back to Boise State in this in that last map. So far, we haven't seen that come out, but this is what Boise State did step up a little bit after the swap. They were able to get a few rounds in a row and then Domingo Sales himself put the battle back into it. So it's not over till it's over. But right now, I mean, zero really stepping up for this team. You, you notice it, I'm noticing it, but also, I mean, one mad bad dog as well. So the, the yeah. top fraggers from the last map, they're doing well on the side of Dominguez Hills, but it's great to see different teammates be able to do well on different uh, points of the game. Yeah, it was Baby and Riley um, really topping out the leaderboard for the last time. No, of course, nobody really doing it poorly, to be fair. Now, this push coming through. One mad bad dog going to win out that fight. Even on Omen action, working in his favor. It's now the right click. Oh, that's disgusting stuff from Symbols. They want to pick that frag up. It is still a man disadvantage, though. For Boise State 2, as Symbols has to get aggressive, doing just that, working out, but it is just trades. As one bad, bad dog swings around, it frags for quite a few, and three for one mad, bad dog, as that is a pistol round in the books. Solid stuff there to pick up the 10th California State. And the uh, clerk, me if I'm wrong, but I think that was in fact a 3K for one mad, bad dog, so mm. great stuff there from the friendly now they are now the top fracker in the lobby so taking that spot from zero just a little bit and it's always interesting to see characters that you don't expect to frag out i mean like controllers especially like an omen um usually see them as someone who plays a bit more passively because their abilities are very important for re-engaging points even if you're down a member or two but i mean if you're finding the kills doesn't matter really who you're playing on and right now so three more rounds to go before this is over for Redingus Hills. They're not going to care who's getting them. They just want to get those kills quick and easy. Yeah, and a, a bit of a half investment, actually, interestingly enough, not fully invested, but, well, that is a very nice shot. Symbols going down early on. It does net some control over here. The up close and personal with that marshal is not the ideal place to be using it. Zeke recovers that weapon, now trying to do the same. Now, not going to work out, so that up close and personal stuff still not working out. The bald now trying to do the meme with the knife and riley says all right dude we'll, we'll take the 1v1 but i'll win it anyway and yeah, we'll go mano y mano and i am the one who's gonna come out and uh in the chat we're seeing honor a duel i respect it so riley uh yeah. giving some kudos to their opponent in that one but i, I mean like i i think the biggest thing was that uh jazaki just went a bit too close to the sun i mean when you got the marshal you should really be playing back you, you can't out duel a specter at close range like that and like you said it was a bit of a commitment um they still can buy some of them will have light armor but this is going to be a bonus round for boise state 2 and at this point you're just avoiding overtime because at, at the, at, like if you give up one more round that's the best you can do if you can win nine rounds nine rounds in a row somehow you'll go to overtime but then there's no guaranteed winner absolutely that's Great job opening things up, though. A two-for-one deal. You're not going to be hating that one Here. if you're Boise State, too. And, in fact, knows that one player, i.e. the Cypher, going to be over there. Tacked down to just 35 HP as well with a Stinger in hand. So not ideal weaponry, but it looks like you're going to be evacuating that area for the time being as one more frag is picked up. So this is a bonus round, to be fair, Jack. But a really nice one so far from the offense of Boise State. Yeah, and the biggest thing is, like, they're winning pretty decisively so far. Um, if they lose no one else, that's going to be a big win for them in their economy. They've only lost one so far, and they don't lose Jabal there, and Jabal not going to be able to heal up. So now it's just a very weak Cypher on the side of Dominguez Hill. So this is a this is a big win. And as if you win the next round, and you able to, you get that momentum going, and the train leaves the station, you can just keep winning over and over again. This series can immediately swing back into your favor. It's still a very big hill to climb but winning rounds like this help you get there a bit easier 
Yeah, a big hill, a long road, tall mountain, whatever you want to say. <laughs> All the analogies. Yeah, exactly. It's certainly going to be difficult. Um, and well, <laughs> that's that's so unfortunate. Like, Gabar is just like, dude, can I please just play the video game? I'm just getting stun locked out here. Uh, oh, man. That is uh, unfortunate, but expected, considering the weaponry advantage available. So now, a nice round there. As we move into the 16th of the game, we are seeing a re-buy, though. Yep, and, and this is this is like the, really the round that matters the most, because if Boise State loses this, it's almost guaranteed to be game over unless they can have the 30 round of the century, which uh, we have not seen them be able to have thus far. Uh, I think the one thing to note, though, is that there is actually a Spectre on the side of Domingo Seals, so that's the one area where they might be lacking a little bit in firepower, but other than that, it is going to be full buys all around. So this might be the penultimate round if it's one here for Domingo Seals, but it, it feels like the final round. I mean, it certainly does, considering the amount of rounds between these two teams at the moment. That being said, you're never out of it until it is 13, like you mentioned earlier. It definitely is always able to be come back from. I've seen some incredible comebacks in my time mm -hmm. casting the Valorant. So I know better than to count out a team <laughs> before we, we see that uh, that victory screen. So looking to be maybe pushing B right here. Not something we've really seen all that often, but has been already done once on this half for the attackers. Boise State too. Baby does try to get aggressive. Gets tagged a little bit. Zero wins the fight elsewhere, and that's a nice shock dart from Riley. The curveball, good. Meets his target. Now it's just one. You said it seemed as if it was the final round. It's looking dire right now for the raid. Right or rather, for the Omen. My apologies. And it was 12 to four now. California State to have a match point. And there was a great win condition there. And it was a symbol staying alive, being able to use that rolling thunder to get onto a point, or maybe they just go onto a point and use it after for the recontest. Fortunately, who dies first? It's symbols. There's your main ultimate offline. And you do have it now. Um, and you gotta go for this kind of weird hybrid buy because uh this is all or nothing. So Jazz okay does have enough for the op, and there's gonna be a lot of other guns online. But uh, I mean there's ultimates there's there's a will there's a way and i think they just have to execute a little bit better on their attack and that rolling thunder is the first thing that has to come out if they're going to do so yeah we talked about it not necessarily finding as much value as we would have liked um on the first map now is the opportunity to change that be the difference maker be the changer as bay v gets into the back line though misses a shot that does make things a little bit more difficult looks like is going to be able to get out of there though he gets help from the teammates. Clear comes through, but the flash coming through as well. Now, terrible. It's in. Lines up one, but the second he's not quite ready for it. So, symbol stays alive, and it is a one for one trade as Jabald, because of that rotation, able to find their way onto the A site, but it is very short lived over there. One mad, bad dog, and the entirety of the defense just rotating quickly as now it's a mad dash for C. It is a mad dash, and Jazzy does have that operator, but just missing that shot. There's the rolling thunder, finally going to be coming out, and now they're going to be able to take over this point, but there's going to be someone in the garage. They just stand it down for a second, but one mad bad dog has been one bad dude. They do get traded out, but it is still going to be in their favor. The spike still hasn't been planted, and that operator is now down. Oh, getting tagged as well. Makes standing. things a little bit more difficult. They know exactly where Symbols is. It's one on three. Here's the player, but it's a double peak and not going to be whipping those shots. Uh, are it is the California State Domingo Sales players. So they close things out 13 to 4. Dominant fashion here in the second map, Jack. Absolutely. A bit more dominant than on our first one, but they get the job done nonetheless both times around. and. You know, this time around, they didn't give up that lead. Uh, we saw before after the swap that they kind of gave up their momentum a little bit. Their rhythm wasn't as in sync, and then they had to refine that groove Jeez. later on. This time, it was never out of question Jeez. besides one bonus Jeez. round. That was it, and everything else Jeez. was all music Jeez. for Domingo Hills. So now, going to be moving up to 2-1 and one on the season. Boise State 2, they're still trying to find their first win of Season 0. But, I, I mean, they played well at certain times. I, I think the biggest thing is... We talked about it a lot, but the reign of finding value. Um, Jabal did pop off in this match, 
uh they were the top fragger on their team and top three in the lobby but it was a, a short-lived match you know not as many rounds as you'd see normally so maybe if that went on a little bit longer they could extend that to have a positive kd later on but i think the biggest thing is we talked about it a lot was being decisive and using your ultimates quickly and using them at the right time um we did see a rolling thunder come out at the very end but it, it just seemed a bit too late, you know? And they didn't clear out Garage, so that Operator was taken offline. Jazz okay playing a bit mm -hmm. too close to the sun. I'm really surprised they were taken off by the flank. And then at the end of the day, Symbol is just getting pincered at the very end. There's nothing you can do there. Yeah, I, I mean, just a, a lot of unfortunate, cir unfor unfortunate circumstances coming together on a couple of those rounds. But in general, like you said, the, the decision-making just not quite quick enough. And to be fair, Boise State 2, they are in a tough division. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got a lot of very good teams here. Um, and these guys, no slouches at all. Definitely, uh, we saw shooting good shots, able to take advantage of a couple of great situations. But um, at the end of the day, California State just able to be that much better, that much that much further ahead um and and so just pushed it over so final thoughts here jag do you, do you have an mvp thought of a candidate here that you want to talk about um before we get moving i'm gonna i'm gonna give it to riley um riley did uh not wasn't as dominant on the second map they were third on their team and fifth in the lobby overall but i think that odin really set the tone on ascent i think that was a big part of why they won that matchup and why the gap started to get a bit farther as that map went on and going into this one they had a lot of momentum so i think riley is a shot as much as i hate the odin I, I really don't like it um but uh and i think another thing is that dominguez hills they were able to get a bit of revenge on boise state because as we talked about boise state 2 and boise state 1 are both in the champions division our top tier here at necc so like you said, not slouches at all, but they lost to Boise State one last week. Now they're able to get a win over Boise State too. So a little bit more, uh, a little bit more momentum for them going forward. Yeah, I have to, I have to agree with you. Riley had a great game overall, a great matchup. Um, but with all of that said, um, it's about time for us to get going. It's mm -hmm. been a long day of matches, and it's been an exciting one as well. Thanks so much for everybody who has has tuned in. Um, it's been a great time. But with all of that said. We, we're going to have to get out of here. We will see you next week or, well, maybe even tomorrow on the NECC channel. So don't forget to tune in, drop a follow. Um, either way, you guys have a wonderful evening and good night. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless.